guys what's going on we got another episode of nothings for no one here with me jason and bill and we have the superfluous uh second lease on life uh andy thomas joining us today super fluid yeah (laughs) is that what i said super fluid super fluid What's the uh, word? Well, superfluous. I think, I think what you were looking to say is is extra fluid. Yeah, you got, <laughs> you got some extra. You got some extra fluid on you. Oh, I got some. <laughs> you, first off, everything I'm seeing right now it just makes me miss you a lot. I haven't seen you, I miss you. since uh, we were at the Smiling Moose. That's the last time I've seen you. Oh my God! Yeah, that show. Did, did somebody put ice cream on me or something? Was that that one? <laughs> yeah, that was the ice cream show. Yeah, mm-hmm. I had ice cream all over my guitar. Yeah, we ice cream social. <laughs> well, ever like as the end of the tour prank, everybody bought ice cream nice. for Black Crown, and like, yeah, I don't even remember it, dude. Well, no, because you guys would bring, you guys would feed me different food items every night. <laughs> oh yeah, that that was the thing too. I believe I yeah. saw a video of Jace feeding him pizza on stage. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. pizza yeah, once. Yeah. yeah, dude, you've done a lot of sick yeah. shit on stage. Me, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, you got to distract from the fact that you can't play real good. Mm-hmm. That's why, yeah. I hear you, man, you know, but it's like, dude, what do you mean play, don't play good? You, dude, you're a fucking, you're like a, you ever heard of this band called ABBA before? Yeah. Yeah. You're almost like them. Really? Yeah, you don't think so? I don't know. I never, I never been compared to them, but I like it. You are now. There's a first for everything, dude. I agree. Yeah, I definitely <laughs> agree too. How you been? How's uh? What's life been like for you these last um, few months? Well, uh, you know, we uh, we finished the new album, and that's that's we've been putting out singles for that. And stuff. No, you just dropped one fun. too, right? Yeah, last Friday or something. Mm-hmm. But I mean, other than, other than that, I've been. Uh, like I said, just slinging pies, baby. Hell yeah. Dude, you went from somebody feeding you pizza on stage to delivering the goods. You have to, you, you have to be good to the young kids that's coming up. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so I, you know, I deliver pizza usually free of charge. Really? I don't ask for tips. No. <laughs> That'd be sick if you did, though. What if you were like a Robin Hood of pizza delivery? Yeah, like if I didn't need money to live, that'd be so great. Dude. Yeah, it would be. It'd be awesome, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that's that's pretty much it, to be honest with you. What's up with you? You know, just chilling. We're both living in Chicago, and uh, it's probably not as hot as it is right now in Arizona. Where are you in Arizona right now? I, I Well, I live in Mesa. Oh, okay. So like, I'm going to take my, take my shades off. I live in Mesa, uh-huh. and uh, so that's basically like, I don't know, like 30 minutes outside of downtown Phoenix. Sure. So, yeah, it's it's okay. It's quiet. Yeah. But it sure is hot. But, I mean, the re- like three, four months out of the year, it's horrible, but the rest of the year is really awesome. That's fucking cool. Yeah, I'm sure it's great when it's not like 30 <laughs> degrees out. Or does yeah. it get that cold yeah. ever? No, right? Nah, uh, I mean, no. in, sometimes, you know, in the winter at night, It'll be 30 to 40, but that's about it. Yeah. That's not too bad. It's not bad. And that's pretty rare. Yeah. It's usually, I mean, it's usually 40 to 50 degrees at night during the winter. And during the day, it's like 70. It's great. Mm-hmm. Well, so that's... it's basically like, it's basically like your Chicago spring for most of the year. Yeah. That's the shit. I wish I had that all the yeah. time. Yeah. Cause I mean, you get, you get like the, in horrible summers too huh yeah oh yeah the past couple days have well yesterday was all right it was the first like all right day in like a week yeah like, it's been like been out of control yeah it's been super fucking hot like upper 80s 
out here, but not yeah. like 110, dude. So I feel bad that I'm even well, comparing. It's a dry him. heat. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you know, dude, like uh, living, I lived in Pennsylvania, you know, for a very long time, and mm-hmm. I would prefer this to Pennsylvania and that humidity anytime. Really? 100. percent Absolutely. Damn. The humidity fucking it exhausts you. Yeah. It does. Yeah, like Texas sometimes, this t- especially this time of year, I'm sure Texas is like a mosquito zone, just full of humidity and not, f- well, certain parts of Texas. I can't figure out why people live in Texas. <laughs> yeah, I can't either, man. <laughs> well, yeah, there's Buckies, I mean, but the, other than that. Like, the only one that I know, like, I get, like, why Stevie Ray lived there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I know <laughs> what you mean. Man, Man, dude, I know why Stevie Ray doesn't, doesn't live there, dude. Yeah. He was bad, dude. Wasn't he bad? <laughs> <laughs> That's Stevie Ray, dude. Man, dude. Stevie Ray, dude. He played, man. Hey, you met my buddy Ethan, dude? <laughs> yeah. You... <laughs> man, you close your eyes, put your head back, dude. You some mad you hear play. Sounds just like Stevie Ray, dude. Yeah, you can't tell the difference. Man, uh, no, nah, man, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking I was on a, a Chicago. Chicago's cool. I mean, it's like we're Illinois as far as like our numbers go, I is like as far as the virus and shit, I think we're aren't we number one in the country for the least lowest. amount? Yeah. Yeah. Right now we're the for lowest. Now, yeah. Oh really? Yeah. But I think it's just because every everybody like we like completely shut down pretty pretty quickly once things started to spread and uh we just started we when was it when did phase four kick in of our city a week ago yeah two like weeks ago. last week all the bars most bars opened back up and most restaurants opened back up obviously with precautions and shit but that's been right. a thing again but right yeah it's right de- it's definitely fucking wild for sure yeah i mean i I'm fairly certain that anyone that's alive right now has never seen anything like this while they've been alive. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, shit, even Joe Rogan hasn't, dude. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I mean, and at the end of the day, it's, it's just kind of like, I feel, I mean, at least as far as Chicago goes, I get worried. The fact that like, well, we're reopening everything again, but what happens if we get an, you know, I feel like it's just a matter of time until we get another, I mean, maybe not as quickly as text as it happened in like Texas or as it happened in Florida where these states had right. to re shut down right. right away. Florida like went hard when they were like, all right, everything's cool. And like people are at beaches and like, it's yeah. insane. Like you probably seen videos like how people just yeah. didn't give a fuck. And then look what happened. Now they're breaking records as far as yeah. cases go. Yeah. It's fucking insane. Yeah, it's it's a, definitely a weird time to be alive. It is. It is. But you know what? You have a new record coming out, dude. I do. I do. Are you fucking <laughs> pumped do. on it or what? Uh, yeah. I mean, I've been waiting for it to come out for like five years. So, I mean, I, I, yeah, I, I think, I mean, it's definitely the best thing we've ever done. I know like everybody says that. It's a pretty lame thing to say, but it's, I think it's true in this case. Um, it's definitely better than St. Anger. <laughs> yeah so, hell yeah so you know but no i mean yeah I'm, I'm stoked i'm i'm it's just weird to put an album out and not be able to tour yeah, yeah. it's got to be weird it's got to be very yeah, weird it's just it just kind of feels like well what are what are we what are we doing yeah but i mean a lot of other bands have done it so that's the thing you know you're not alone yeah, how do you how do you feel about that? Because I've I've been noticing, you know, there's been a handful of bands that I've noticed who have purposefully been delaying the release of their album because of the pandemic and how it could affect either their touring cycle or even just the sales cycle, you know, the sales of the record. Uh, yeah. Per se. But I also have been seeing bands that are just like, fuck it, we're still putting out new music anyway. Yeah, I mean, I, I think like for for us, that's sort of. Uh... I mean, that could go either way, you know, because the fact that everybody's stuck at home yeah, uh, may, may mean that they buy music more. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that could be that so, could be uh, very true. I've been buying a shit ton of music since I've been at home. Well, yeah, I mean, I have a CD player in my car, dude. Do you know what I did? Hell yeah. There was, I uh, do too. Dude, there was so last Christmas, uh, my girlfriend's brewery did a did a like white elephant gift exchange. OK. And uh, I. I never, I always, like, I 
realized that I didn't own the first four Van Halen albums. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I bought them for the White Elephant Gift Exchange, knowing that nobody would want them. Uh-huh. And then it was, and when then when it was my turn to pick a gift, I just picked them, and I was like, "Oh my God, the first four Van Halen albums." <laughs> <laughs> the CDs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fuck yeah, but, dude. Uh, and they were used, so I mean, I spent like twenty bucks. I got the first four Van Halen albums on CD, and uh, you know, nobody like nobody tried to take them. Oh yeah, I will. There, I mean, I guess the other people are the ones who are missing out. You know, that's what I always say, dude. I mean, if you if you don't like the person, if you don't like Van Halen with David Lee Roth, you you suck. Who doesn't like Van Halen with David Lee Roth? I I think there are probably a couple people. <laughs> yeah, people prefer Van Hagar. Well, I mean, dude, I think you have to like. It's probably like dads that look like Sammy Hagar. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably moms that look like Sammy Hagar as well. Yeah, yeah. better, dude. Yeah. 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 Hell yeah. yeah. Are you? I'd be so sick if your if your mom looked like Sammy Hagar. <laughs> yeah, it would be really cool. It's definitely a Florida yeah. mom. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 There's got to like be... him too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like you like. Like singing you lullabies when you're a baby, but it's Sammy Hagar. Yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that'd be so cool. Yeah, that would be the shit. Dude. <laughs> yeah, man, fuck. I wish my mom looked like Sammy Hagar. She definitely Dude, does. Me too, man. Yeah. Me too. I I feel like I feel like that's that sucks. If my mom doesn't look like Sammy Hagar. The first woman I ever dated looked exactly like Alice Cooper, though. Really. <laughs> Yeah, like Alice Cooper bad. now or Alice Cooper <laughs> then? Uh, is there really a difference, kind of? I don't know. You know what? He just he, looks like a leather <laughs> man. Oh shit! Oh wait, oh, yeah, there oh. you are. <laughs> he looks like a man made of leather. So I don't know. Well, he lives in Arizona, so I mean, you know. Oh, does he? Be told. Yeah, yeah. He lives. He's. I think he's lived in Phoenix like all his life. Oh fuck! I didn't know that. But, Did uh, you ever go hang out with him? No. I, I want to. Yeah. But he, I think, you know, he's probably busy hanging with like Johnny Depp. Who else could? Yeah. 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 Do you ever see that video of like, I think, I forget what, it was like some band they did together. It was Johnny Depp, Alice Cooper, and some other guys. And Johnny yeah. Depp, like, it was like Hollywood vampire. Yeah. 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 And it. he's playing yeah. like yeah. guitar really badly. And it's just like really Dude, hard I to watch. I posted that video on Facebook recently. <laughs> did you? <laughs> nice. Yeah. I didn't because, see it. And I, I said, I said Johnny Depp has chops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does, man. You've been everything you post on Facebook is just like gives me a big ass grin on my face, dude. My favorite in recent memory definitely being "Please scream inside of your heart." <laughs> yeah, well, do you know the story of that? I did. So I looked it up because <laughs> so I was driving. <laughs> I was on a date and I was driving, right. and then uh, I was on Facebook because I was like, kill, like just waiting for something. And then I saw Annie just posted, please scream inside your heart. And I was like, <laughs> oh, that sounds either I, for some reason. And I don't mean this in a racism way, but for some reason, I'm like, OK, that either sounds super Japanese or it's just like, what the fuck is this? So That's I said I screen capped it and I sent it to Andy and I was like, <laughs> what is this? And he was like. Google it. First thing that comes up <laughs> yeah. is this news article. Didn't I? Didn't we talk we about talked this? About this yeah, yeah. So yeah, it, go ahead. <laughs> it's this news article that that's asking its amusement park goers when they ride roller coasters to in, not in Japan. Yeah, yeah in yeah. Japan to not um not scream out loud, but scream inside of your heart. Right. Because as if it, you scream out loud, mm-hmm. you're gonna salivate the, and the virus, spread yeah. the virus. Yeah. So um, I don't. I I honestly don't think it's racist to say that that is an incredibly Japanese thing. Yeah, it's super fucking Japanese. It's it almost it's it sounds like a South Park parody of something from oh, Japan, yeah, for sure. but it's real life. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. the, the best part, did you see that video of the two guys on the roller coaster, like <laughs> not screaming? <laughs> that I haven't seen, no. dude. And that that I it's in the, it's see. in that article. It's is just it? like, <laughs> yeah, it sounds funny, but then when you watch it, is it's it? just kind of like, man, this is just like not. This looks not fun at all. Like, like, life, is, like yeah. life isn't fun anymore. Yeah. Right? No. Just You yeah. just have to please scream inside of your it's heart. It's a good representation of 2020. Yeah. <laughs> well, please I mean, scream the inside that, of your yeah. heart. Yeah. The thing about it is life is not fun anymore. So. Right. Oh, it's your heart. heart. I mean. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I 
I am bored to death. Yeah. What do you What do you do with most of your free time now, man? Um. I, well, to be <laughs> to be really honest, I drink a lot. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Uh, I I I play guitar. Cool. Um, I have two dogs that are really fun, so I oh, hang out with nice. them and my girlfriend. Hell yeah! Uh, but I mean, after a while, you know, your home starts to feel like a cage. It's pretty weird. Yeah, definitely. I definitely can relate to that too. I bet I work from home now, so. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, it's great. I should never complain about it, but there's definitely like a weird change of pace where I'm just like, oh, is this like how life is gonna be now? When I like kind of <laughs> yeah, fucking right. hate this, like. The like cabin. You you work time. with Sam Liston, right? Yeah, yeah, I do. That guy Sammy definitely L. screams inside of his heart. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, he does. Man, Do you know he does. Yeah, I definitely know he does. I miss Sam, dude. I haven't I haven't seen him since probably the last time we were in the office together, which was a long time uh, ago. I miss that dude a lot. Yeah. Me and that guy have gotten into a lot of trouble together. Yeah. I said what was funny was like I started working at Zounds and I noticed there was this dude there that would like always wear black crown initiate shirts. And I mm-hmm. like didn't put two and two together that you guys were actually friends. And I was like, well, I kind of know the Black Crown guys. This was before, obviously, we had toured together, but I knew you through like the Rivers guys and shit. And, uh, right. Yeah. And then we started talking. And he's like, oh, yeah, me and Andy are good friends. And I was like, oh, shit. Okay. And then he just went on, like, told me all kinds of stories that just like made me want to scream inside of my own heart. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. I didn't know how to react, but I was just like, wow, this all sounds very, very, very exciting. I could scream inside of my own heart to this for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Yeah. Well, touring together yeah. was a lot of fun, and I feel like I screamed inside of my heart a lot, but for good reason, you know? Me too. Me too. It was a good scream inside it, of your heart. It was. Yeah, <laughs> yeah dude. It's a great scream inside of my heart. <laughs> Remember that show in, uh, where was it? Salt St. Marie? Yeah. Or whatever you say it. Yeah, Sault Ste. Marie at that, like, hotel Marie, bar. Everybody everybody got drunk. Yeah. Before I was Dude, we played and, and I was I was like, wow, these songs are fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. I so that, that that show, I was really upset at my band members for something I couldn't remember, but like after we had played, I went up because we checked we get we all got didn't you guys get a room there too? At that yeah, we all did at that hotel. Yeah, we got a room. And I was like, oh, I'm gonna try and like sleep for a little bit. And Adrian bought this like weed mouth spray at a dispensary because that was like the only form of edible they had and he was like oh you could have some of my like mouth spray up there and i'm like all right so i took like four big ass fucking sprays and like i was gonna take a shower because we obviously played like second out of Mm. whoever fucking opened that show and i fell asleep for like four hours (laughs) yeah and then adrian like had to come in the room and wake me up to help with loadout and i was like oh i guess i slept through everything but yeah that was sick everybody Everybody did get very drunk afterwards. I was drunk when we played. <laughs> oh, yeah, were you? Yeah, yeah. Malcolm, me and Malcolm got hammered. Before we yeah, played. that's sweet. That's fun. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I, I, dude, can you imagine who the opener must have been at that show? <sighs> Probably like I, I don't know, like <laughs> Sue Sue Saint Marie's premier ACDC <laughs> tribute act. I think that's exactly what it was, dude. <laughs> yeah. Something yeah, like, they're called like they're called like Back in Black. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure. Isn't there a band called Back in Black from here? In Chicago. Yeah, yeah, that's an AC, <laughs> that's an ACDC cover yeah, band. There you go. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, dude, they're probably like they're probably like, oh, you gotta fucking check out our fucking our fucking band. Play, they play here, man. They're fucking rippers, man. Yeah. What <laughs> accent like, is that? Like, cool. What accent is that? Oh, yeah. It's it's a, it's an attempted Canadian. Oh, okay. Canadian. Got, yeah. But you know, it's 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 uh. Yeah, that place. That place. Remember the, the? I remember the PA system. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Do you, <laughs> do you do you remember at that show like the the people that worked at the hotel wanted us to leave our gear in there overnight until we checked out? Mm-hmm. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. That was yeah, weird. You? Yeah, in the because it was it was mm-hmm. really weird. It was like this weird like yeah, weird. hotel mom and pop type hotel. Yeah, yeah. And the, they had like a bar and a little area for bands to play. But we just had all of our gear like on the floor and they were like, yeah, leave it here until like it's like a security measure. And we're like, what? No, Uh-oh. like, I guess. But eh. yeah, no. Yeah, it was a real it was a real den of waterheads in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Dude, you know what? Uh, this is gonna. <laughs> It's, it's not going to sound right, but like, yeah, man, sometimes like that was my first time ever in Canada. And there was a lot of interactions I had with people where uh, I would just say something or I would ask something and they looked at me like I didn't speak. English. Like I just said something that was mm-hmm. like either super insulting or super just like just flu. like a lot of responses where I was like, man, is this person like, you know, are they all right? Are they like all there? Or are they, yeah, dude. <laughs> A lot of people are like that in Canada, I've noticed. Oh, Canadians, uh, they're very pleasant, but they are mm-hmm. weird. They're weird. They are they're, weird. Yeah, they... Uh, I think it's because they uh, probably do a lot of screaming inside of their hearts. I I would say that Canada is definitely a a bastion for that. Yeah, for sure. definitely. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, because, like, can you imagine, dude, like, they're not allowed to have American cheese. <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, I <laughs> could have mentioned that. Yeah, it's it's illegal up there. Like, what? Get out of here. <laughs> so I don't like it. You guys did. You guys did that tour with us. Then, then you did. <laughs> you guys did a European tour after that, right? Yeah, with Rivers. Okay, and then did you have you guys done like a full U.S. tour since you've been back at it? Uh, nope. Damn. Mm-hmm. Fuck. Did you guys have some shit in the works before all this went down? Yeah, we had our best tour offer by far ever. Oh, fuck. And, uh, Can you say who it was with, or is that a private matter? Uh, I, pro- I probably shouldn't, but it was It was like, it was good. It was direct support for a very large band. Sick. And, uh, yeah, well, obviously, I decided against it. I decided that I'd rather just deliver pizzas. <laughs> Fair <laughs> <Yeah>. enough. <laughs> it wasn't even a mat. The pandemic was not. <laughs> the matter here very noble. no 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 i i just i really i'm passionate about uh working in the service industry until the day that i die <laughs> that's that you know what dude that's you're a real grassroots human for saying something like that yeah for salt, your, salt of the earth type person definitely like manly would say De- <laughs> definitely man i miss mike manly wait john mike Man- manly sick yeah mike manly mike manly is the guy that came on tour right yeah. With us. And then John Manley is his brother. Cousin. Cousin. That dude is fucking insane. <laughs> John Manley is one of the reasons that this country hasn't been invaded by an outside force. yet. <laughs> Just because of John Manley. <laughs> yeah. Like you, you can't, that guy, dude, I've seen him. I could tell you stories about him that you wouldn't <laughs> believe. <laughs> I would, I, mean, I, I watch his cooking with Manley episodes on Facebook that he does. Mm-hmm. And, and I like how he does the episodes in segments. So it's like episode one, part one, and then episode one, part five. And like, yeah, it's episode a, one, part 20. Yeah. <laughs> and by part, by, by part 20, he can't even talk. Cause he's so drunk. <laughs> yeah. Dude, half the time, yeah. like I'll catch him doing them live. And I've never, t- I've never talked to that guy. I've never said a word to him in my entire life. I don't really, I don't even think he knows who I am as a human being. But like, I'll just like quietly observe this man, like from my the comfort of my phone, uh-huh. as he's just yeah. like obliterated, drunk, trying to cook something, and he <laughs> won't even even like at that. Sometimes I'll catch him at the point where he's not even like saying words oh, anymore. Really? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's yeah. very sick, dude. One time I went over to his house when when I was like eighteen. I've uh-huh. known him since I was fifteen. Wow. And, um, okay. Did you have you known him longer than uh Mike or John? Yes. Yeah. I've known uh, John way longer than Mike. Oh, okay. But um, I went over to John's house at, when I was like 18 to like smoke weed or something. Uh-huh. And, uh, and his mom was like, John's upstairs. He doesn't feel very good. And, and I, I went upstairs and John had stolen some of his dad's medication. I don't remember what. Oh, uh, okay. Um, <laughs> and he had taken it and he was vomiting everywhere. But dude, I swear to you, like, you're not going to believe me, but it's the fucking truth. He had this growth like this protrusion out of his stomach while he was puking it was like something was being birthed out of his stomach and then the next day it was gone what the fuck was it we call it his busted gut (laughs) his his busted gut yeah he had busted gut (laughs) I'm (laughs) well (laughs) What's, did the 
of the busted gut ever like come back at all? No. Nope. That I'm was dead. it? Yep. Damn. I swear, dude. I fucking swear. <laughs> I believe you. I mean, that definitely would... If I was the human that would have busted gut like that, I would definitely be screaming inside of my own heart. Well, I dude, think. you know that show like... You know that show Modern Marvels? Mm, no, I don't think yeah, so. Where they, I they'll don't. They'll be like... They'll be like, look how they built this skyscraper. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, okay. Like, John, John Manley should be on this. <laughs> oh, yeah, just as a guy? Yeah. Just being like him? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Modern Marvel, <laughs> yeah. I agree, yeah, dude. dude. I, I would watch it if they did an episode on him, you know, or just a series on him. Dude, he, like, roasts his mom real bad. Like, the one time she was wearing a yellow sweatsuit, and he was following her around the house calling her school bus. <laughs> um, like when you were there yeah <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> yeah that guy's, that guy's so fucking awesome dude dude I, he really is like i thanked him in our new album i call him big cat oh yeah yeah hell he's, yeah he is he's he's a genuine article dude yeah fuck yeah Man, dude, that's so sick that you guys have. So this I've obviously I I don't know if I should say it on the show. James showed me the record a while ago. Um, can say it. I can say it. You can say it. Oh, I'm saying it. James James did show say me the record. We played Warforged. We played with Replicire in like February on that tour, yeah. the tour they did in Chicago. And James came. We were obviously we were hanging out with James and he uh, he showed us the record. And I've I've listened to it a few times and I definitely think it's like I, it's easily the best thing you guys have ever done but just like as far as like a modern i don't even know if you'd call it death metal or whatever you would want to call it it's just there's a lot of fucking intense shit on this record yeah uh it, it, i mean it it took a while to i mean I, i've said it in a few interviews really because like nick and i the way we wrote the ep our mm-hmm. first thing uh th- we didn't have there was no pressure for us. We had no label. We had no team. We had no goal in mind. Yeah. You know, it was just like, let's make this music that we want to make and put it out and whatever. And, um, this record was the same way because the band fell up, as you know, like the band fell apart in like 2016. Yeah. So we didn't have, we didn't have a label. We didn't have management. We didn't have anybody. We didn't even know if the music we were writing was for black crown or whatever. Mm -hmm. It was just, we were just writing music because we enjoy doing that together again. You and Nick. And, um, yeah. Okay. And um, that's how it came to be. And then Ethan stepped in at the end and wrote some shit. And Hell yeah. Ethan Ray Vaughn. Ethan Ray Vaughn, dude. <laughs> yeah. Man, you close your eyes, you lay your head back, dude. Man. That dude Wouldn't is a even... fucking, yeah, he is a ripper for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, dude, he's, uh, he's, he's incredibly gifted musician. Yeah. How did you, how did you guys, how did that dude come into the band? Well, when I I used to teach guitar at a local music store in Reading, and Ethan was dude. I've known I've known my buddy Ethan for so long, dude. Uh-huh. He came in <laughs> he came in when he was like he was like 15 years old. He's like, "Will you show me how to play an Iron Maiden riffs?" <laughs> yeah, and I, and I was like, "Yeah, sure, kid, whatever." And um, then he he was practicing like 11 hours a day, and then within like a year or two, I was just like, "Dude, I I can't teach you anymore." <laughs> you know? Yeah, you taught him for and that then, long though, for like two years. Yeah, I taught him for a while. And, um, he, he was actually the first guitar player that we asked to join Black Crown when we started the band, but he had a bunch of life shit that he had to, that he wanted to do first and all gotcha. that. That's when we got Rick. Um, okay. Yeah, but, yeah. I don't think I ever met Rick when he was in the band. He's a cool dude and a great guitar player, man. Yeah. I think he just wanted more, he wanted more of like a, like a domestic life. Sure. Which is understandable. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Was Rick in one of those <clears throat> in one of James's and yours other previous bands pre Black Crown Initiate? Yeah, I was in two bands with Rick before Black Crown Initiate, but nothing that ever nothing of okay. no. And James James was in one as well, but it was separate. <clears throat> okay, gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. Hell yeah. Okay, so you got this new fucking record coming out. It's obviously a hitter. Um, I'm it's calling it right now. Definitely a fucking <laughs> hitter. It is. It's just like it's very like. It sounds like the culmination of everything you guys have done. I feel like in the past on every record that I've heard, but it it sounds like a logical growth. But at the same time, I feel like you're covering a lot more new ground with it. 
And I feel like anybody could say that about any band's new record. (laughs) So I don't mean to say that from like a bullshit perspective, but there's like a couple of songs on there where I was, I really like gave them multiple listens because I was just like, what the fuck is going on here? Like James did some insane shit on that record. And you too, man. Like some of those songs are super fucking, I mean, the whole thing is great. I'm very pumped to like have this. I'm, I pre-ordered the actual CD. So I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, man. I'll have it in my car. I'll bump it in my car while you're what's in your CD player right now, dude. Uh, well in my, I, I have a few, well, I have a couple Van Halen CDs. I have Van Halen one and two. Uh, I have some Seeger roast for when I'm feeling extra happy and I don't want to be depressed. Cool. Um, <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's it's. I just pretty much listen to it and cry. Yeah. But uh, but I scream inside my heart. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I bought the new. I got. I have the new ulcerate in here. Oh yeah, you like that? Yeah, it's sick. I still haven't heard it front so. to back, but what I've heard is very cool. Dude, their drummer man, Jamie St. Oh, Marat. Yeah. God. Yeah. He's an animal. Yeah, we we actually saw them at Cobra Lounge uh, years ago. Yeah, it was, it was like it was on their, their first U.S. tour. And their first time in Chicago and uh, yeah, watching them in a small, I saw them in a small venue like that. And then the second time they came around was at Reggie's, which I saw him there too. And that dude is just like insane to watch. It's just like, yeah, I don't even know how the fuck you would even begin to play like that guy <laughs> as a drummer. No, dude, it's, it's like, it's, it's, it's very odd shit, but I mean, you kind of do similar stuff. I mean, your, your guy's music is, is kind of similarly dense like that. Yeah, I, th- I think. In a way, yeah. I feel like like ryth- rhythmically challenging. Yes, it is definitely rhythmically challenging. Yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. Like it's kind of similar in that regard. It's not like necessarily melodically similar or anything mm-hmm. like that, but it, but with that that rhythmic density, you guys have that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I guess that is a, a common trait there. But even the way like he'll go into these rhythmically complex parts and then just do something that's so out of the box. It's almost like not Mashuga, but like in a in a similar approach, I feel like where it's just like this guy is already taking a very fucked up part of music and just like deconstructing it and making it even weirder than it already is. Yeah. And that's, no, he the, does. Yeah. He really, obscure, he really obscures what's going on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's so yeah. sick that he does that. Cause, and I'm just like the entire, every time I put on like an ulcerate album, the entire time I'm pretty much just I, I, like being a drummer, I'm totally listening to the drums first and foremost, but yeah, right. just the way everything comes together. Yeah, fuck, man. Now that we're talking about it, I'm like, I should really listen to that new record. I would recommend it, dude. It's, it's. I like it. I like it a lot. It's my favorite one since. Uh, uh shit. What was that? <clears throat> the one before the last one. It was. Uh, Vermis. No. The one uh, before that. Destroyers of all. Destroyers of all. Yeah, I like it that one my, a lot. It's my favorite since that. Oh, and sick. Think, okay. I mean, my favorite ulcerate is probably I, I really like the world is made of fire. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah that was really good. Is everything, everything is, is fire. fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every, the world is made of fire, and everything is fire. What is the world is made of fire? That's another band, isn't it? I don't know. I don't. I. I have no idea. Probably maybe it's like hate breed or something. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I have, do you ever like think about how fucking wild it is that? Black Crown Initiate has toured with like the Acacia Strain, and you've toured with like Voivod. Yeah, I mean, dude, that's <laughs> because because like I don't think anybody knows how to market us, and I, I mean, I, I don't. Yeah, I mean, like because I mean, we've like because we've like that Deicide tour we did, like we didn't fucking put money on the tour. <laughs> I you remember know, like, that. I was at that show in Chicago when it got moved to Reggie's last minute. Yeah, Deicide and Hate Eternal. And shit. Yeah. We- <laughs> yeah. You know, and Entombed? And, and, dude, yeah. Entombed. Yeah, and then Glenn Benton actually, it was weird, dude. Glenn Benton liked me and he liked my voice. Really? So he he would watch me every night from the side of the stage. And I'm like, Glenn Benton's watching me yeah. play every night. And he, he called me Perry Como because I sang. <laughs> oh, yeah. And he had like this selfie stick and he would take selfies with me and shit. <laughs> Glenn Benton? And I was like, yeah. Do you have any of these selfies? No, no, I have no contact um, (laughs) with Glenn Benton. You know, I I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know how to contact Glenn Benton. I mean, I'm good friends with their new guitar player, Chris Canella. He's the dude who actually hooked me up with ESP. Oh, shit. Okay. How new is is he on their last record? 
Mm, I don't think so. Okay. I think he's newer than that. Even. Newer than that? He I might gotcha. have been. I don't know. Yeah, I still. I uh, that's one of they're one of those bands where I, I'm still really into the new shit that they put out. D aside, and uh, yeah, that's fucking. Wait, what did he? He called you Larry Cuomo. What did Perry. he call you? No, 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 per- Perry Cuomo. Oh, Perry Cuomo. Okay, yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, <laughs> sick that he would call you that. It was wild. What did you call him? Like Dean Crosby or something? Well, dude, I have I have a titanium rod in my leg from a D aside mosh pit. Do you? Yeah. Yes. From that tour? And, uh, no, no, no. Like, <laughs> So it was when Jesse was playing in Jungle Rock years ago, and they toured with Theosai. Okay. And uh, because Jesse was play- doing Black Crown as well, yeah. put me on the guest list for the Theosai show in Reading, and I got all drunk, and Theosai started playing shit off the of surface of the light, and I was like, I'm going in the mosh pit. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, the person I was with was like, you, sh- you shouldn't do that. And I was <laughs> yeah. like, well, well, I'm going to. And uh, I have a, I fractured my, I had a compound fracture in my tibia and fibula. Holy and, like, shit. The, bone, the bones were outside of my leg. Oh and, my God, dude. Yeah. It was really bad. The, the hospital, my local hospital said it was the worst, second worst leg injury they'd ever seen. And the first was a fractured femur. Oh my Oof. God. Fuck dude. Yeah. I've seen, I've seen a, when I was, huh, this is, I've, I think I've told the story on the show before, but I was in high school in my first period class, my sophomore year was a uh, gym. Like that was my first class of the day. I had gym mm-hmm. and uh, that sucks. Yeah, it did suck, especially <laughs> being a fat kid. It was not sick. Um, but uh, I was I, a fat kid in high school. Were you? Yep. No shit. And I, I'll get back to this, but I graduated high school in the same class as Chad Henney, the quarterback of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Whoa. Being a fat kid playing dodgeball with him really sucked. <laughs> Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure it fucking did. <laughs> wow. You'd hear, you'd, hear the, you'd hear the ball coming at you, and you'd be like, I know I can't get out of the way. Yeah, definitely. I would just, like, not go to class sometimes when dodgeball was a thing. I would just be like, I'm not going. Yeah. 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 Dude, I... But what happened to you in, what happened to you in gym class? So, um... The te- like teachers would get to school early and sometimes they would do like pickup games of basketball, like before all the students came in, like or before they start, maybe like some teachers that would like start their shifts later on in the day. Um, and I remember my math teacher was there. He was playing a game with uh, one of the gym teachers. His name was Coach Baker and they were playing like a pickup game of basketball. And somebody passed the ball to Coach Baker. He was I was just sitting there because I was waiting for the bell to ring so I could like go change and then do gym. Mm. And uh Mr. Baker's like holding the this basketball and he does this pivot and like you don't even see his legs move. Oh no, all, no, I don't like this. All oh, of a sudden no. I just heard like, dude, yeah, it's fun. no no no. Yeah, graphic no, no, warning. No, no. But uh no, no, no. All of a sudden I just hear like this ear shattering screen oh. and I look up and I had like this was I had my CD mm, I had an iPod by then I had my iPod uh-huh. classic and nice. I paused whatever I yeah right. I paused whatever no. maybe DSI no. record I was <laughs> listening to and uh, <laughs> I see um just this weird yellowish white like thing sticking no, out I of can't. his leg oh. I can't I can't I can't dude I, I can't do it All I mean, right, I'll stop it's I, dramatic for me I'm sorry man Fuck. yeah it's fucked no, it's man okay. And dude, instead of in, like, I didn't see any oh. blood. I just saw like yellow pus yeah. stuff yeah. mixed with blood. And I was just like, oh my God. And then like my math teacher, like so, he knew I was there and he came up to me. And he's like, Hey, he was like, uh, you could go oh. home for the rest of the day if you want to, man. Yeah, and I was just, yeah, and I was like, I'm fine. Like I like, didn't, yeah, I like, I like, I've seen metal covers worse. Yeah. Than I that. just, yeah, I just yeah. didn't go to gym class that day, but I just remember being like, whoa, what the fuck? That was fucking so insane. He just like turned and it just, yeah, he didn't, didn't even, go it, it was, just... it was like he was holding the ball and I'll stand up. It uh-huh. was like, he was holding the ball like this uh-huh. and like he had his feet planted and you know, you can't like move your legs again. Cause that's right. whatever. Traveling. Yeah. And uh, he like did a shift. He just went like he oh. rotated that. And oh. just, like this right leg just went just like boop. fucking yeah. snap. Just oh. came out like oh. yeah. it was oh. up, dude. And he was like standing too. He he didn't move. Like he didn't even fall to the ground. Really? Yeah. It was fucking weird. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so. Jesus. Yeah. People Christ. people heard my leg snap over DSI. That's oh. was it on time with like a snare hit or something? <laughs> I, dude, I couldn't tell you. I went into shock immediately. Yeah, yeah I probably. Yeah, fuck. and you were drunk, dude. There's, there's this. So this, there was this big security dude uh-huh. that where he's my friend. His name's Steve, and he picked me up like a baby. Because what happened was, 
what happened was, dude, so when it broke, I laid, I was on the ground and somebody like, cause I was in a pit, somebody picked me up to put me back on my legs. Yeah. My feet, oh. But I didn't, my bones in the bottom of my leg were snapped in half. So God. I had no leg essentially. So I went to put pressure on my leg and realize it's, it's the weirdest feeling. I'll never forget it. Like you don't have a leg. Yeah. So, and then, and then I fell again and then somebody picked me up again and I fell again. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then Steve, and then Steve picked me up like a baby and put me on the bar at this venue. And he put, <laughs> he put and you he on the bar. <laughs> yes. Yes. But apparently, apparently oh. I was asking people, I was going, can I straighten my leg? And they were like, dude, you don't have a leg. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, I was in shit, shock, bro. Dude. I didn't realize I got in trouble for swearing in the ambulance so much. Really? <laughs> really? Yeah. What do they do? Give you a hospital detention? <laughs> How do you get in trouble? Dude. Well, and then I made like an Irish joke. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I don't know, say? dude. Like, my dad told me this. I don't remember any of it. Uh-huh. I asked her what nationality she was, and she said Irish, because I was already on painkillers from the ambulance. Oh wow, okay. And um, and she said she was Irish, and I went, "How do you get a one-armed Irishman out of a tree?" <laughs> you wait. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> you wait. <laughs> <laughs> And she was, she was like, what? And I don't know. I don't even think that's a real joke. Yeah, I don't either. I don't think that's a real joke. I don't think that's a real joke either. That's, that's how you got in trouble? No, no, I got in trouble for like screaming fuck like a hundred times. They got pissed at you for that? Yeah, I guess it was probably excessive. But, you know, me, I'm a man of excess, Jason. I know you're a man of excess. You were drunk and your fucking leg was shattered. I think that's like enough of like a go ahead to be like, oh, you could definitely you say, say some you want. pretty yeah. vulgar shit and yeah. get away with it. Yeah. yeah, That was like one of the worst days of my life for sure. I'm sh- How old were you? Do you remember? 2013. Oh, wow. Oh, so okay. I would have been. So I would have been. Oh, God. I would have been 25. So no, you- 20. I don't know. Something. There was a lot. It sounds like there was a lot of screaming inside of hearts that night. Yeah. Um, oh, without doubt. In yeah. And without outside. Doubt. Yeah. In, in <laughs> yeah. and outside of the heart. But uh, I mean, hey, at least you're back on your feet. You know, did you tell Glenn oh, yeah, that dude. story? I did. I was like, dude. I, I made a joke. I was like, you owe me a new leg, Glenn Benton. And he was like, no, I don't. <laughs> it doesn't like already. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, oh, I can't argue with you. You're Glenn Benton. Yeah, dude, I would be afraid to say a word to that dude. I was, and then he started talking to me. Yeah, that's he really liked cool. Me. It was weird, dude. It was weird. Glenn Benton liked me. That's sick, though. And, like, he hated everybody. Like, he liked Eric Rutan and stuff, because, like, I'm sure they've known each other for years. Eric Rutan's like, cool. Yeah, Eric Rutan's cool. But, like, he, like, he liked me. Mm-hmm. I didn't, I was, it was very, very strange. I was it like, why do you like me, Glenn Benton? Was that that? That was not the same tour that the Acacia Strain was on, right? That was a Metal no, Alliance no, no. tour, but it was a different year. Yes, the Acacia Strain one was Dying Fetus, Acacia Strain. Yeah, Jungle we, Rot. We went to that show. Me and Bill went to that show yes. in Chicago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that was a, that was an interesting tour. I, I, it didn't really do well, and I, I suspect it was maybe because because of the diversity of the of the package. That was like the reason we went to know. the show. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and there's a lot of people that would, but I, I feel like there's a lot of people that wouldn't too. Because like, yeah. if you're like a real heavy dying fetus fan, you probably don't like Acacia Strain. Yeah, yeah. And vice versa, you know. Yeah, I, I could see that. I, I I love them both. I mean, I don't I don't care. Yeah, me too, man. I love especially all that new Acacia Strain shit they've been putting out. It's so. Oh sick. my god, it's great. Yeah, it's heavy as the day is long, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, man, that's it's real wild. good. Yeah, so it's like you're in a position where it's like, okay, you put out, you have a pretty, I mean, like every Black Crown record is sick, and you guys have done some insane tours, and now you're like, I mean, now you guys are, are I feel like you're part of this wave that's like this new wave of like Century Media signing all of these sick ass bands out of the blue now, like you guys, Vitriol, yeah. um, who else have that Beneath the Massacre and shit, like. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. It's cool to see that it's like, oh fuck, this label is like picking up sick bands and like they're doing a thing again, you know? Well, and it it just sucks for all of us right now. Because, yeah. Like I feel like I feel like you guys too. Like you were on an upward trajectory for sure. Oh yeah. And and um, you know, it's just 
Yeah, like every like the three bands that, that you uh, you guys us and and Barry, mm-hmm. they were all like all doing well. Rivers is doing well. Yeah, everybody's doing well, and then it just had to stop. And I really, I I don't really know. It, it's weird to think about what the future might hold because I don't foresee any of that coming back anytime soon. At I don't all. either. I mean, especially if like we're already at this point where now like there's travel bans and like nobody from Mer- um, America can essentially get outside of the country. And in the meantime, I'm seeing like bands like announce like European tours from here. And I'm like, how the fuck are you going to get over there? Yeah. I mean, I, so those travel bands are definitely legit. Cause I've seen some stuff about how they are. And I've seen some stuff, but dude, that's the other thing is access to information. There's too much goddamn information. Yeah. Most of it's bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I just, you know, it's, it's really hard to tell what's what. And I just, I'm just kind of to a point where I'm sick of all of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I don't blame you, dude. It's, it's just like everything is coming from everywhere. And with like, <clears throat> you know, not only do we get hit with a pandemic that still I feel like nobody in the country, let alone the world, understands, you know, like. No, that's the thing. It's what like, exactly it, it could be, do. It's crazy how political that became, too. It's like really it's. It's really fucking ignorant. But I mean, and, and it should it should have been like, OK, well, like, what do we have to do? What do we have to do as people to do the best we can so that this doesn't go on forever? Yeah. And in, instead it became like, well, fuck you. You're this. Fuck, and it's just God. It's so and that's dude, that Facebook is the worst. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Facebook is the worst. I definitely agree. Um, but it's, it, you can have you can have one on one conversations with people that don't agree with you. Yeah. And generally you arrive at a conclusion where it's not that you hate each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Facebook is just this easy way to just go like, fuck you, dude, you're an idiot and you're wrong. And then, you know what it is? Because nobody gets their ass beat on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yep. that's true. Like the people wouldn't talk the way they talk on Facebook if they were face to face with other people. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 It's, it's fucking, it's insane. It's insane. I feel like I was, I was actually talking to somebody about this the other day. I started watching dumb comparison, but I started watching that show Chernobyl, that mini series that oh, was okay. on HBO. That was, that was, it, was good. Really yeah. Good. I thought that was heard. good. It was great. I love it so far. I haven't finished it yet, but I noticed that in the show, a lot of the higher officials seem to be struggling with the fact that they're coming to this conclusion. Like, Oh wait, this is going to be a travesty and we need to evacuate these cities because all these yeah. people have already been exposed to so much radiation. They're probably going to die in a matter of, mm-hmm. you know, years yeah. to weeks. And it's like, you see so many people like these political figures being like, Oh, well it doesn't matter. Like, you know, we don't know that. Oh, it's still totally under control, but it's totally not. Right. It's just like, it's just I feel like, yeah, mind. I feel like there's this human condition where it's like, some people, I mean, I guess I can't say everybody, but there's a good chunk of people that it's just like, we don't want to like, you just surround yourself with ignorance to be like, yeah, it's like, it's I mean, like George Costanza on Seinfeld where he says, it, it's yeah, true. it's not Jerry. Yeah. It's not alive. You believe it. And it's just like, yeah, whoa, I think it's easier for people to believe that it's some sort of weird hoax or whatever yeah. than actually believe that it's a real thing. Cause if it's because since it is real, but I mean, like if it was real to them, it's like, that's terrifying. Yeah, you know, it is so terrifying, and I get that. Just that's like out a, of sight, out of mind. You yeah. know, it's all fake. It's a way of her yeah, you know, control it, you. It, you know? And that's the thing. Like for me, it's it's like it it goes both ways, and that's why I think that's why I think it's it's like important for people to have one on one conversations because like, I do too. I believe wholeheartedly that the COVID nineteen virus exists and that it is dangerous, and like I, I, none of that I would question for a second. But I also know that like for example there's a there's a there's a local police officer that that frequents my restaurant okay and just i didn't know he was a cop at first but we just started talking and he told me that he re- he responded to a crash a car crash where a dude was ejected from the vehicle yeah and died of nearly being decapitated Oof. and this police officer found out that covid was put on the death certificate uh. so he called the governor's office he called the governor's office and the governor's office said that that's the 30th call that day that they received of that nature. Now there is a virus, but why the fuck is that happening? Why the fuck is what happening is, are they calling that they're chalking it why, up to COVID-19? Why are people, why are, why are decapitations being labeled COVID deaths? I don't know. We heard, 
what did Danny say? Didn't he say something along the same lines where he said father's friend's yeah, friend or something like we, that? We heard a story about like um, somebody that one of our bandmates, uh, his father had heard a story that um, one of his one of his relatives was like in a hospital dying of something that wasn't COVID-19 related. But well, the dude ended up dying. Was it cancer? or It might have been cancer or something like been, that. Yeah. But essentially, yeah. with the hospital that this dude was at, I, I'm, we don't know if this is true. So, this is like yeah. third hand <laughs> shit. But um, yeah. apparently what they did was they went up to the family and they were like, hey, we'll give you like $10,000 if we could say that uh-huh. this is like a death that's chalked up to COVID-19. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, I have tons of friends that work in the medical industry, and I make it a point to have one-on-one conversations with them. Uh-huh. And there is absolutely a monetary incentive for a hospital to put COVID on a death certificate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, where, that's where the nuanced conversation comes in. That's why you have to talk to people. Because if you say things like this immediately in their brains, people go, oh, he's like a COVID denier. Which oh, not. yeah, absolutely. You know, like, I get it. But at the same time, why is that fuckery happening? Exactly. Yeah, and that's that's the whole thing. And it's it's just like... I mean, especially with Facebook and just social media in general, it's like oh, everything oh. is such a you're either 100 percent on this side or on you're 100 percent. Yeah, it's yeah. just like it's it's so black and white and nobody ever leaves any room for any middle ground or any circumstantial situations. And it's just like, yeah, you know, and a balanced perspective is where truth lies. Like the truth exactly. is in the middle. It's not extre- it's not all right or all left. Certainly not either of those. Yeah. Things. So like for people legit, like. You know, that's that's the thing. It's like it's discouraged to have conversations. It's discouraged to ask questions. And while I do believe that COVID is real, absolutely, I th- I'm troubled by the fact that we're discouraged from asking questions about. It. Yeah, because yeah. like those questions are potentially like things that could help other people. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, dude, I, I remember the first couple of weeks when it started hitting and it was just like left and right. You would hear so many fucking insanely different claims and comments oh, yeah. about it. And it's just like, think of how many people are on this planet alone, like on planet Earth. It's like so overpopulated as it is. But it's just like how yeah. much information and wrong information gets out. And like, right. you know, it, and things. Get, it's, yeah, yeah, it's like the world's biggest game of telephone. And then it's like, <laughs> you know, I, yeah. it, it's just like the yeah. m- most insane shit. And I just I don't know. I like I can't live in a world where everything is. I mean, I can't function thinking in like a white, black and white mentality where it's just like oh, you either get this or you no. either get that or you're fucked. And it's just like and then it's it's just like it's such a I feel like it that type of approach just creates more toxicity than what's really going on. Yeah, because you're just um, fighting at that point. You know? Yeah. And I mean, that's, well, the, and that's the thing. That's the thing is like we sh- if we would stop with all that shit and realize like if you want to look at it from a from a cosmic perspective, even like humanity is one fucking thing. Yeah. We're we're we are we are one consciousness experiencing itself through these little things that we call Jason. It's, it's like it do, it doesn't matter. But like if we would just look at it like that, we could say, okay, well, how do we get together here? Stop fighting each fucking each other and 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 find a solution. And we might find that that a lot like for example, this election coming up. Like what a fucking joke, dude. What a yeah. fucking joke. Mm-hmm got two goddamn child molesters two of them and you got people going people going like well this child molester is better than that one and here's why get the fuck out of here what if you actually thought about the fact that we're about to elect another child molester president yeah like 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 with all this fighting we're doing what about what about that kind of shit what about why don't we help ourselves out of that situation you know, I, I don't. Yeah, I'm just ranting, and I'm, and I'm, no. I'm stupid anyway. But <laughs> <laughs> I hear you, man. I mean, no, it's just it's like, and it is, it is fucked up. It's, it's just like I think every single conversation I've heard, minus like my grandparents <laughs> that have talked about like this upcoming presidential presidential election. It's like nobody is on board with. It's, it's, yeah, them. it's this. It's I like know, the same thing as sucks. last year. It's like, oh, this, you know. I mean, Biden only has time. the leg up because we've already experienced Trump, and most people are yeah. like over it. You know, yeah. but it just sucks yeah. because I mean, choice dude, is Biden. You know. Yeah. Well, that. I mean, did you see? Did you see the video of him pinching that little girl's nipple on television? Yeah, I have seen <laughs> that <laughs> video. Dude, dude, that dude molests kids on camera. Yeah. And He's it's like, an yeah, fuck, I mean, Trump, like you said, we've experienced Trump. We know what that is. It's like it's almost a moot point to even talk about it. Right. Yeah. But now we got Biden. Now we got Biden. Yeah, not much and, better. And, like, and how could e- how could either of how could either of those how could either of those possibilities be good for the common people right. anyway? 
They're not. Like They're absolutely are, like, not. Those are our options. Like that's ridiculous. Yeah, it sucks. Out of all the it's, people it's so in fucked. this country, those are our two options. Yeah. It's like what? And, the fuck? and I would go out on a limb here and say that the moment that the people of the Earth or the United States, for a start, went, Nah, we're not doing that anymore. Maybe if nobody voted, just no. That's not no. Fuck that. Then you might see some goddamn change. Until then, it's just going to be more of this, yeah. and we'll mm-hmm. wipe ourselves out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much, man. I mean, it sucks to think that, like, it just, it just sucks. It sucks all around because it's, like, the little things that, you know, guys like us have, like, music and touring and, like, right. you know, art and anything in general, like, those things that kind of make it more humane to kind of live in a world yeah, that we do. Sure. It's just, like, that's gone, you know? like, yeah. And it's just, like. And nobody asked us. Yeah. Nobody asked us, man. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like, 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 you have all these people. You have all these people, right? I mean, dude, you got to look at it from both sides again. Like, yes, this is a big threat, but there are yeah. people like, can you imagine like all the work you've put in with your band? Mm-hmm. Like, and you don't even like, you don't even have a building or a property or anything like that. All, mm-hmm. But all the work you put in to start that small business, can you imagine someone who started a small business, the amount of work they put in and what they're facing right now, because the government's not helping them. Mm-mm. All the big businesses are getting bailed out. Yep. Yeah. So like, don't forget so, the church is getting I mean, bailed can, out too. <laughs> dude, I completely understand why people are pissed. So when you have that argument like, well, you're an ignorant racist hick because you care about your business. No, that's not right either. Yeah. And, and, and it's like, it's, it's, it's fucked up, dude. And, and it's until we start to, that's the, I think the point I'm trying to make is that until the common people of the planet realize who the real enemy is, which is the elites, and we go. You want to go after somebody? Let's go after them. Yeah. Until then. Yeah. Until then, nothing's gonna change. Mm-hmm. And you're right, dude. We have this music thing. Like nobody asked us, dude. We were the first ones to be like, "Yeah, go fuck yourself, buddy. Go deliver pizza." Mm-hmm. It's now I'm essential. Now I'm essential. Now I can work. Yeah. You no, know, but yeah, that's so wild. Yeah, like. And 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 then everybody like you know I, I notice like people around me are like, dude, why are you so bummed? Why are you so depressed? And it's like. Because the thing that I do, the only, like, I'm a fucking idiot. The only thing I know how to do is play music. Yeah. And that's gone. So why are you depressed? Because, like, if you had, like, a career accountant that really enjoys that, it's like, that's a little bit. (laughs) Yeah. That's a little, that's a little different than, like, you're not going to be like, man, I've lost my numbers, man. Yeah. Like. (laughs) That's very true. I I fucking love, like, I don't have, like, I have, I have love and i have my family and i have my dogs and but man like i'm i mean yeah i'm I'm preaching the choir dude i'm sure you guys get it it's just like it's fucked yeah it it is but i mean i know i know that i'm not like not like great white where i'm like let's go play a show and blow some more people up we were just talking about that before before we started this episode we were talking about and where was that show in texas Texas. yeah jesus was it texas yeah 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 Yeah. (laughs) Man, dude, man, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man, we don't got to worry about no COVID. We'll just have a good old rock and roll show. It's it's pretty <laughs> wild, man. Like, I was actually yeah. a little curious. Um, It actually just got canceled, but I was talking about it with you and Nate at practice before. Hmm. Jungle Rot had a show that was yeah. booked um, in Joliet that they were supposed to do. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah. But it was so weird because it was like. First, there hasn't really been any shows in Illinois other than I think some bar entertainment there's, here and there's there. There's been some random ones yeah. I've heard about yeah. here and there, but nothing's yeah. been like promoted Legal. Yeah. because they could get in trouble and whatnot. Because I'm pretty sure the law right. is like it's a 50 person limit, like a 50 person capacity limit in buildings no in Illinois right size. now. Yeah. I yeah. believe so. Okay. And the thing is, is like I looked at that jungle rock pill. There were six fucking bands on that show. And you average five guys in that yeah, band. That's How many people, people are you going right to have in there. the audience? So 15? 20 and then yeah. there's staff. Exactly. So what are you playing <laughs> yeah. for five people and a bunch of other guys? They canceled the that's show. It's a very expensive ticket then. <laughs> yeah, they did cancel. I mean, I don't know. Maybe they were doing something different. I don't, you know, but if know. like yeah, that was I, the parameters, I would have been like, what the fuck is the point? And like, right not that i'm like i'm should great white after what they did in 2003 should they be the band God. that like i'm hearing about doing this like i'll take them over something that yeah, i like right. but like, like it's it's just kind of wild to me because i know there's obviously gonna be a point 
where I think all three of us could be like, all right, at some point, some band is going to have to do it. Some band is going to have to be the band that's like going to start touring and going to start playing more right. shows out again. And it's I, like, dude, I, I absolutely would do it. Yeah. But not now. Yeah. Not no, now. not no, now not either, now. man. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. But definitely not now. I mean, I'm afraid to go outside <laughs> now sometimes. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's kind of weird because I have like a different perspective on it. Because, but I mean, I don't look like you live in Chicago, dude. Like yeah. that's very, very compact city. It's like, yeah. Um, but like, you know, Phoenix is very spread out. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's geographically, it's a lot different and structurally different. Yeah. Um, but man, I've been like, I delivered pizza for like two months sure. full time and there was no mask mandate or anything. Like I, I, I really, I have to say like I raw dogged it about two months wow and and i i didn't it's weird but i think that might have i don't know like i guess that has to do with why it's hitting arizona now i don't know i I don't know but that was that was kind of wild because i I was was kind of thinking like is is it safe i don't don't know if it's safe but like it's just but like you what would i do would i turn down my job Exactly. You know, and, and, you know, the essential stuff, that's, that's an interesting thing too. Cause I think you, you, there should have been more attention paid to the fact that like, if you're going to shut shit down to like, try to, uh, try to, you know, soften the blow of a spread or whatever, however you want to put that. So you want to like contain a spread, like why wouldn't you shut everything down? Yeah. Right. Uh, and then, you know, that gets into, again, like wh- how we're getting fucked as common people. Yeah. Which nobody seems to really like, uh, like to me, these are like, besides the actual safety of people, these are the biggest issues to me. Like, wh- like h- why, why are, why were the big box stores allowed to continue to stay open? Yeah. Why, like, wh- why is, <laughs> why isn't anybody furious? About it? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either, man. You know, like, I mean, if you think about it, like, at least in Chicago, that's what it was. It was like for the first Well, yeah, month. because all those big box stores, they're the ones whose stock market's going down, and they're the ones paying all the politicians to be like, yo, we, what are you yeah. doing? You know, we pay you for these regulations to fix for us and give us tax breaks and whatnot, but we're losing money now, yeah. so you got to get the people back in there. And that's pretty much what it yeah. comes down to, you know? Well, I remember when they announced the shelter in place in Chicago or whatever mm-hmm. they went like when they first did it um, and the governor was just like, yep, yeah, you could go to grocery stores and that's it. You know that yeah. that one thing I do get because it's like you need to get. Food. Yeah, obviously you need to get those things. But <clears throat> why right. is like something like Best Buy open or, you know, like yeah. that shit. It's like, come on, man. Like you don't need any of that. <laughs> yeah. And then some of them get away with it, like Target and Walmart, because they have little grocery sections. But then. Yeah. Oh, you, you know. can come and buy a new 65 inch TV because exactly. you're going to be at home Go for ahead. two yeah. months now. Like, ugh. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know, man. It, I don't know it's either. a huge bummer. It is a huge It's bummer. a huge bummer, but I, I, I keep in my heart that until, you know, people <laughs> get really mad about a lot of things, but I scream inside of my heart that, <laughs> that until we until we really go after the, the people that run the planet and restructure that, this is just our lives until the end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, maybe something like this could be a wake up call. I mean, hopefully for a lot of people to see what's going on, you know, could Um, be man. But yeah, I mean, I mean, dude, we like, we, we literally, I mean, it's, it is literal. Like it's, it's, it's astonishing to me that, that the amount of like pedophilia, for example, that goes on with those people. Um, Okay. And, and like no one's, no one's dude. No one's. No one cares. Why don't we? Why don't we care about that, dude? I they think it's care prob- I, You know what? Like, well, especially they, with the they pay good money for us to not know yeah. or care about. I it. mean, first <laughs> off, you had we had right, like right, right. Especially with the pedophilia shit. Like before, I really started like paying attention to the Epstein stuff. Obviously, that's mm-hmm. like on Netflix now. It right. used to be. It mm-hmm. used to be like Alex Jones was like the man for that shit, and nobody ever took anything that guy said seriously the problem <laughs> yeah, is he throws job. too much out there yeah you know and it's hard to take it i mean look at danny it's like we don't take him serious because he says a bunch of weird shit and then when he does something serious we're like 
Oh fuck, that was real. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, and then it's like you hear, yeah. you know, you hear the term like a psychic vamp or psych- psychic vampire. Is that it? <laughs> and it's just like I'm like, this sounds like some weird shit off of General Hospital right. from 1993. <laughs> and then like I look at, and then you see, it, but you, then you see it in the, like the correct light, and like you start right. to put these pieces together. Especially all this shit. I mean, now like look at. What was that woman that just got arrested? That's all up in the news. Uh, Elaine Maxwell. Yeah. yeah. Like, and now everybody is like, let's see how she ends up quote unquote killing herself. Right. And it's just well, like, I mean, oh. dude, like you guys have seen the Epstein flight logs. Yeah. I haven't. No. no. I mean, there, there like are a list like, of people. You read it's crazy. It? Yeah, dude. Like read it, man. Yeah. It's there. And it's like, these are people like Tom Hanks, dude. Like these are <laughs> people. These are people that we, as a society think like that we should look to for some type of guidance yeah. and they fuck children. Yeah. So, so when are we going to actually look at that for what it is and go, okay, well that needs to change because the people that we're looking to hierarchically up there in the sky, whether they be movie stars or politicians or whatever, they fuck children and they traffic children and they hurt children. So what, yeah. when does that matter? When does that, it should matter now. I agree. I mean, I, I agree that it should matter now. I think, I think that, I mean, maybe the fact that it's not always, cause it's like, I mean, shit, that's never on, you know, you never hear shit like that other than, you know, things that are more on like linked to like a, like I never heard about very high profile yeah to like get out into the world. Otherwise it gets Mm -hmm. swept under the carpet really fucking Exactly. I mean, you saw the whole Epstein like thing and how, I haven't finished the whole oh, thing, okay. no. But I know, but I know enough. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, it paints a good picture of how just fast things move and how quietly things move. Yeah. All because these guys have so much fucking money. Yeah, it's insane, you know? dude. Yep. It is fucking insane. Yep. And it's just like... And they're making our decisions for us. Right. <laughs> yeah. They're the ones at, at the top, like, deciding things. And it's like, what? Yeah. Like, no. <laughs> they own the major corporations. They own the media. They own the politicians that we're about to vote for. In this joke of a fucking election. Right. Yeah. And, you know, it's like a lot of people are really mad and understandably so for a lot of reasons. But it's like, hey, guys, uh, I, I kind of it's it's like there's there's fucking eight billion of us. Yeah. It's like it's pretty clear that there is a way out. Yeah. Yeah. But it's going to take people getting together and stop fighting over which political park, which kid fucker they want to back. Yeah. Yeah, that's, like, get that's over very it. true. Get over it. Move on. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, come on. Like, can you say, like, I? how do you look at a guy like Trump and be like, yeah, he's never fucked a kid before? <laughs> like, how do you think that, you know? Like, like I'm sure he has a laundry list of horrible things he's done. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and the same with Biden. Right. Yeah, yeah Biden, exactly. Dude. Yeah, it's the same shit. <laughs> oh, I, man, it sucks. It's just so it's fucking so like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah. But it's, but what's cool, like, is there is positive in this. And what's cool is that it is becoming more so than ever common public information. Yeah. And the more of that, I think maybe the more we'll have something to work with um, if we want to try to reshape our society into something that is uh, workable and, and that, that actually truly benefits the majority of people. And I think mm-hmm. what's dangerous right now is you have you know, the conservative right, which is just traditionally what it's always been, which is a load of horse shit. Mm -hmm. And then you have this, you have this like super Marxist thing on the left, which is like, well, that, I mean, that hasn't worked any other time that humans have tried that. And you can, you've got a pile of about a hundred million bodies that tells you that. Mm -hmm. So, so what's, what's, what's the, what's the truth here? It's not either of those things. It's somewhere in the middle again. Yeah. And a good place to start would be with the fact that, like, if you want to get mad at somebody, get mad at the people that are doing this to you. Yeah. Don't get mad at other common people. We're mm-hmm. all stuck in this fucking mess together, whatever we believe. And that's what I'm just getting back to with the one on one conversation. You could you could have a one on one conversation with just about anybody and leave that conversation with new understandings on both sides and a mutual respect. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. And you can. And I now, have. I have. There's, like. I mean, that's now, like you don't want to have you don't want to have that conversation with a, like a fucking racist or a child molester or whatever. No. But generally, it's 
saying. Yeah, no, that's true. I mean, I, I try to reserve all most of my almost all of my political opinions. I never I never, ever engage in any of that shit on the Internet, especially social media, just because it's just like it's not worth it. It's it's not know? worth no. it. Like, I don't no. know. I mean, it's just like I see. I mean, I the other day I saw somebody post a tweet saying, like, if you're in a band right now and you're playing any live performance, like I, you're a fucking piece of shit. It's like, oh, like, my God, whoa, pump like, the brakes. Yeah, like. guys, <laughs> like I can't fucking think that way. And I can't. I'm just like, I would be afraid to talk to somebody like that. Yeah, because at that point, their mind is already made up. Yeah, and, just and I'm too yell dumb to come up with any argument. It's just like, <laughs> Fair enough. oh, yeah. You know, like yeah, I when, I feel, when I feel pressure, I just go like, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, exa- same. Right. I'm just like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I wasn't prepared for this. Like, yeah, yeah. It's but but dude, nuts. yeah, that's the thing is like this. There is, there is so much gray area in this vast fucking universe, yeah. and you know, it's if humans understood what what they really were, which is like every fucking thing. You are the universe. You're an expression of something infinite. Well, then you really like if you realize that you can start to do work to shape a society that is based on love and compassion and respect yeah. and not run by pedophiles. Yeah, that too. That would <laughs> that would now, be preferable. I, now, again, and again, like, how, how do you do that? I don't know. But I mean, start holding start finding a way to hold these fucking people accountable. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Well, it's just like they're all I mean, it's like ever and it's that's the whole thing. You realize like. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of people that I've seen out there where they'll just be like, yeah, I'm just going to go vote for Biden because I fucking hate Trump so much. But Biden sucks. And it's just right. like, I can't help but think of the decision of like, OK, like I hate this entire system. I hate all of the candidates. Huh? It doesn't make me want to participate. Right. But I understand that, like, I mean, the the other side of the token is like we're living in a world where like our country is bound by that. Like we're bound by that shit. And it's just like, and then a lot, I see a lot of people taking a stance where they'll point a finger and be like, well, you're not voting or you're not supporting anything, which makes you a piece of shit because these are, it's, it's kind of like, and I don't, I mean, mean, this is a blanket statement and I don't want it to be, you know, (laughs) taken the wrong way. But I, I feel like, you know, these are, these are the people that are just, they're like, okay, we realize it's like they realize the game of what the system is Mm -hmm. and they're playing it. They're voting for Biden over Trump because they want to play it to be like, we know we're stuck in this shit system. So we're going to try and pick the lesser of two evil. You know, it was like the Hillary thing last time. And it's like Hillary Clinton's fucking insane and scary. (laughs) Like what the fuck? Like it's, well, first of all, she's a terrifying woman. And I, and I use this analogy a lot because I think it's a telling one. And it's, you know, Barack Obama, because I don't buy into either political party. I never have. So I'm open about it. Mm -hmm. Um, Barack Obama, we gave him the Nobel Peace Prize, and that motherfucker dropped more bombs on other countries than any president in recent U.S. history. Yeah, he was drone bombing bombing countries and shit. But people are just like, well, this is he's a Democrat, so he represents this stuff, and that's what it is, and that's the end. So he's, he's a Democrat. He's not a racist. He's not bad. And he's peaceful. Like you're in a box. If you're if you're a Republican, you are racist. You drool and you can't think, and you you are afraid of God or whatever. But it's like you meet people and you talk to them, and that's not the way it is. Yeah. On either either side, but these like this political system, man. Oh God, it's gotta go. Yeah, it does have to go. I'm definitely with you there. I just think it's 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 ridiculous because there's no end in sight. It's like. I mean, fuck, four it's years ago, I remember everybody money. being like, oh, we could figure it out next time. And it's like, now look what we have. <laughs> yeah. Dude, when Obama got elected, like, uh, I was in high school. I was a kid. Like, I didn't I didn't understand it. Mm. I was too young to vote, like, his first election, I'm pretty sure. This is the culmination of lesser of two evils for yeah. a long time. Oh, yeah. Now we literally have our presidential race is Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Mm-hmm. And, like, I don't even know... I don't like, I see, like, I see people posting things where they're, where they're like, both, both sides are like, my candidate is a good human and here's why. And it's like, you are either, I I don't know what you, I I don't know what you would have to be to think that either of those men are good or worthy of any type of support or to, to put your faith in them to take care of you. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. And the, I'm like, uh, yeah, I mean, this, this is getting to be a heavy conversation. And like I said, <laughs> I'm it's okay, man. But 
I, I guess the moral of the story is I do hope for the best and I hope people wake up and I hope we can actually, you know, use, use these, these, these incredibly unstable times to maybe shape a world that is, is worth, you know, living in for our kids and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what better time than now, man? Yeah. This, this world as it is, is not worth living. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty insane, man. It sucks. Yeah. It fucking sucks. I mean, there's no, there's no, I, I'm yeah. And I'm not the, I'm definitely too dumb to fucking figure out any way like to make anything like that work. But I know there's people smart enough out there that probably can, you know? Oh yeah. Right. Well, I mean, it's dude, it's, it's that, that, that old Chinese book, the art of war, like rule number one is you got to know who your enemy is. Yeah. If you don't know who your enemy is. You can't fight a war. Mm-hmm. And, and, and our enemy, you know, my enemy is not some, you know, conservative who makes the same amount of money that I do every year or some, uh, you know, Democrat that, that makes the same amount of money that I make every year and that's struggling to feed their family. That's those are not my enemies. No. You know, my enemies are, are, are the people that are creating this this fucking shithole of destabilization. Of course. Year after year. And then they put up this fucking facade of an election and we argue with each other over that. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it it's is ridiculous. Fucking ridiculous. Yeah, it definitely is. It sucks. Oh, I'm going to get canceled for this so bad. You guys are getting canceled too. <laughs> well, <laughs> we're all going down together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The three of us, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, shit, dude, we, um, <sighs> if there was a presidential debate between Eric Rutan and Glenn Benton, who Ooh. would you vote for? Oh my God. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. <laughs> Damn. I mean, dude, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, my loyalties are with Uncle Glenn, dude. Really? All right. Yeah. I think I might have to go with Rutan. Yeah, I think so too. I feel like JC is like for how, everybody. <laughs> dude, you want to hear a good story? <laughs> yeah. The first, the first night of tour with Hate Eternal. Um, I don't know if you've ever met our bass player Nick. I think you have, Jason. Yeah, I have a couple times. Yeah. Well, he. Oh man, it was great. He. I get up on stage. We're getting ready to 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 like load up on stage. Our first, it was at the Al Rosa Villa in Columbus, Ohio, where Dimebag got shot. Mm-hmm. Ah, and um, Ooh. yeah, it's it's pretty eerie to play there. Um, but Nick had a bottle of water, and I watched him do it, and I just let him do it because I'm like, this is going to be great. <laughs> he put his he put his bottle oh. of water on Eric Rutan's JCM. Oh, why like, would you ever do one. that? Why? Like the one who did it. And I and I swatched the dude out of the corner of my eye, and I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Eric Rutan, he goes, he goes, who, who put this bottle of water here? And Nick was like, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Rutan. I did. Then, <laughs> <laughs> did he say it like that? <laughs> no, I mean, you know, that makes fun of him. But, yeah. but Eric Rutan was like, you don't put that on my JCM 800. And Nick was just like, oh, I'm so good. <laughs> and uh, yeah, dude, it was, it was good. That was is good. fucking Everything awesome. A cool guy, but like, don't put water on his JCMA. Yeah. Not a good yeah, idea. Clear, yeah, clear, clear. <laughs> no. Dude, there was a huge yeah. party fall. There was um, the tour that Hate Eternal did. It was a headliner they did. And Rivers was on the tour. I think Beyond Creation was on the tour too. Warforged played. Yeah. The, Warforged played the Chicago day to that show. And, um, let me preface this by saying, like, I don't know anything about guitar gear, barely <laughs> at all. And uh, Rivers was touring on Monarchy, and they were using their Kemper units, um, like they still do now. And uh, Brody yeah. was like carrying his Kemper, and Eric Rutan was like, he made like we were in all in the green room. I was in the green room with Brody, and like Eric Rutan made some take took some jab at like uh, the Kemper, and Kemper. I said, and I was yeah. just. I don't, Cause I knew like Brody had told me about the JCM 800. And so I was just like, yeah, man, nothing like a fucking real genuine, like JCM 800. And then Eric Rutan was just like, just like looked at me with this wide eye. And he was like, you fucking get it. This and like, gets it, yeah. Man. And then he just started, he was like, <laughs> oh. let's just list some of the great bands that you, and he just like went on, we were talking about it for like 10 minutes, dude. And I was just sitting there being like, yeah. I don't know what to say next because right. I don't know anything that's about that amp or what we're even about talking about. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that's it. I just know what it's called. <laughs> I don't know anything else. Yeah. But I was just like, yeah, dude. And he was like, you're all right, man. You're cool, kid. Dude, yeah, that's that's all you got to do to get in Eric Rutan's heart. I know. Fuck, dude. Yeah, he was definitely <laughs> screaming outside of his heart that night, dude. Dude, he. I got drunk. 
I punished him real bad on yeah. that tour. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I would have. Dude, you know who I you know who I punished? I punished Kirk from Crowbar. Yeah. <laughs> he's a fucking he's a sweetheart of a guy. But like the first night of tour of tour with them, I got really hammered. Yeah. And like he was he was using I think he was using Randall amps at the time and his guitar tone was it was it was like Louisiana thick, you know what I mean? Sick, yeah. Like the, <laughs> yeah. And uh I just went up to him and I talked to him for way too long about how how sick I thought his guitar tone was. Uh-huh. <laughs> and and he finally went like, "All right. I fucking get it." <laughs> and I was like, "All right." And then the next day I was like, "Yo, Kirk, I'm sorry, man. I was I was really drunk." Uh-huh. He was cool about it. Yeah. That's cool. But man, That's I, funny yeah, he yelled at I, you. Oh, well, dude, I talked I probably talked to him for like 30 minutes about the same thing over and over. <laughs> <laughs> And he's he's a he's like he's a he's a sweetheart. Uh, yeah. But man, he was just like, dude, shut the fuck up. And yeah, you know, to anyone who's met me knows that there are points where I should shut the fuck up. I like it, man, <laughs> dude. Every time you didn't shut the fuck up on tour was like my favorite parts of the tour. Like when you were singing that macabre song. Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. When I was singing Dog Guts and I almost got kicked out of the venue. Yeah, and I was, dude. We were, you were up on the top floor of the venue, and we were outside in the alley loading out, and I could hear you doing it. Like that's when how. Jeffrey f- was a boy. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah dude. It was yeah. sick. And then the and security that- guard told you to stop, and you're like, "Yo, have you ever heard Macav, dude? They're fucking sick." And he like didn't yeah, know they, they are, were. dude. Macav's so sick. Yeah. We listen to that like in the because none of the guys in Warforge like I think ever listened to Macabre before, and we oh, listen to it. And everybody's oh. like, "This sucks." Even me, I don't like Macabre, <laughs> <laughs> but everybody is like, "Oh, this sucks!" Like, <laughs> yeah. But it's sick yeah, when you yeah, sing I, it, dude. Dude, I fucking I remember seeing Macabre at Reverb and or no at the Silo in Reading, Pennsylvania, in like 2002. Oh, fool. it was it was it was it was Cannibal Corpse on Gore Obsessed. Wow. Hit Eternal Whoa. on King of All Kings and Macabre. Oh my God. That's a sick and ass show. It was, dude. And I just remember like smoking a bunch of weed with the dudes from Macabre. And I was just like, God, I was like 16. I was like, this, I love this band. Dude. Yeah. They're from, aren't they from Chicago? <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're from, they're from here. Chicago. Yeah. 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 Yep. I did their, uh, their annual holiday show this last year. Oh, yeah. You guys yep. did, right? Something yeah. is waiting to him. I forgot mm-hmm. about that. Damn, I want to go to a macabre holiday show. Yeah, they do one at Reggie's every year. Every you should year. come out, yeah. man. Dude, that sounds like a pilgrimage, bro. It is, definitely <laughs> is a pilgrimage. Haven't you pilgrimaged to Chicago before with with John Manley or Mike Manley? Mike Manley, we, we came to visit Sam Liskin, and we went and saw that Chicago open air last year. Yes, I've heard oh, many cool. stories yeah. about that trip. <laughs> good oh. stuff. <laughs> yeah, plenty real, of good stuff. Real hammered, dude. Yeah, drunk <laughs> stuff. I do, so... Tool got done playing, and I was out in the street, like, as everybody was leaving, and I was pointing down the one road. There was no bar down the road, but I, I came up with this bar that I called Fletcher's Blue Hen. Fletcher's Blue like, Hand? Blue Hen. Blue Hen. Blue Hen. <laughs> yeah. I was like, dude, I was like, there's a bar after party at Fletcher's Blue Hen. I, was, I said something like, I said they have, like, 300,000 <laughs> beers on tap. Hell Yeah. <laughs> And I was I was telling people that Tool was playing the after party. And like, <laughs> do they believe and, it? And, yeah, dude. Some people bought it. Dude, I bet and, they uh, did because it's Chicago open air and it's on the south side, isn't it? In Toyota Park, mm-hmm. isn't that where they do it? Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty much and anybody I, dude, that I would be that. there would probably believe anything you said. <laughs> oh, and I was hammered, dude. I was and I, like in the middle of it all. I was like, I was like, I was impersonating the Beastie Boys. I was going intergalactic, intergalactic. <laughs> Intergalactic and like <laughs> nonsense, dude. But like, I'm pretty sure some people look for Fletcher's Blue Head where they had 300,000 beers on tap. Oh, and I said, including Sam Adams Boston Lager, dude. <laughs> sick, you don't see that a lot anymore, man. No, no, it's because it's bad. Yeah, <laughs> I hate Sam Adams. Somebody, Max Sam likes Adams. Sam Adams, dude. I like their Does seasonals. It? Yeah, <laughs> I like their Oktoberfest. Yeah, see, that's a good one. But regular Sam Adams, you're not about it. Mm. What no, about Colt? 45? But I am, about, I am about Max. Yeah, Max is nice. the shit. Max loves you, man. He's always talking you up, dude. I love Max. Yeah, he loves I you. I love dude. your whole band, I dude. We lo- we love your whole band, and we miss you guys. <laughs> when but, the world well, yeah, I mean, stops, when the when we could go outside again and not worry about dying all the time, more so than we already do. Yeah, dude, we definitely should fucking do it. But. 
I don't think we're ever going to tour again. I don't think so either. At least for another 15 years. <laughs> yeah, but by the time we can tour again, my, I will either be dead or my body, my body will be in so much disrepair for out from alcohol abuse that I won't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, jeez. Damn, man. Well, I mean, on the bright side, at least you guys got this fucking record coming out. Yeah, dude, I hope people like it. You know, I hope it. Uh, I think I they're going to. I mean, that's what you like. That's what I can hope for is like maybe it helps people or something. I don't know. Yeah. As, as little as as little as my stupid record can help. But, you know, hopefully it helps. So did you because when we were when we were touring, you were only playing that one song live, the one that you ended up debuting first before you guys even recorded the record right it was like the a, one that i the one that i called jason nitz is a fuck beast. you did which what the fuck <laughs> happened to that name dude <laughs> well we changed it to years in frigid light yeah yeah it's you know i was actually just telling my girlfriend about that last night so you were texting me and i have you in my phone as fuck beast oh and um, <laughs> great <laughs> yeah yeah and she oh, yeah. And so she's like she's like who is fuck beast and why are they texting me <laughs> Uh-huh. I was like, oh, that's, I was like, that's Jason Nitz. He's a fuck beast. Yeah, I guess I get, what is a fuck beast? You're like a beast at fucking. That fuck, that fucks? A beast that fucks? Well, you're like a beast at fucking. Oh, shit. Fuck like a beast, bro. Damn, I guess so, yeah, man. It's, it's a wasp song, yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a wasp song? Yeah. yeah, fuck like a beast. Oh, fuck like a beast. Okay, cool. I like fuck beast. Yeah, it's, it kind of rolls off the tongue. Fuck beast, you know? Dude, I think the word That's beast is so funny when you describe, like, somebody's, like, a beast at, like... Right. Like, the other day I was talking to Nate. He was talking about John. He was like, yeah, man, John is a beast at driving. And I'm like, imagine just being, like, this giant beast while you're it's driving a car. Yeah, it's <laughs> sick, dude. It's so yeah. fucking cool. Yeah. yeah. Dude, yeah. Or, like, he's a, he's a beast at cooking. Yeah. Like, it's like, what? Like, you're just this... You're, like... They're like this big thing in a kitchen. <laughs> yeah, dude, beasts don't fucking cook. They like eat raw meat and live and don't get tapeworms yeah. and shit. Seem like a some no, like, Jason. They do. Dude, have you <laughs> ever well, have you ever met anybody that's ever gotten a tapeworm? No, have you? Yeah, I knew a kid named Nat really? Schwartz in fucking seventh grade. He had a tapeworm. <laughs> Fuck. He had a tapeworm Nat the summer Schwartz. before. Yeah, he Nat Schwartz Yo, sucked, dude. Did he lose a ton of weight? He sounds like the type of kid who would get a tapeworm. <laughs> uh, he got no, uh, I don't know, because I didn't know him. I was new to that school at that time. But he was one of those guys that told me, because I really liked Avenged Sevenfold when I was 12. And he told <laughs> me that they sounded like, he, he said they sounded like Mario on speed. And I had to like corner him and ask him what that meant, because I was like, what is speed? I didn't know what speed was. Fair enough. And I was like, what does Mario have anything to do with? And he was like, well, it sounds like Mario music. And but really fast. I was like, what? Yeah. Weird. Like, yeah, dude, uh, you, you suck Nat Schwartz. Yeah. I hope yeah. you get another tapeworm. <laughs> yeah. I hope you get tapeworm. <laughs> he ended up being kind of nice towards like high school and stuff, but nah, I, I, don't I don't like know. him. Yeah. I don't really like him either. Yeah. That much. Fuck him, dude. Yeah. So if you're yeah, listening dude, to this, I, Matt, I, fuck you. <laughs> I knew kidding. this, I knew this dude, gr- I knew this dude growing up. Uh, named Brian, and he used to swallow rocks. So like, <laughs> whoa, really? Yeah, you'd just be like, dude, swallow this rock, and then he would do it. <laughs> How and, would he, uh, what happened? He died. Did he die from <laughs> swallowing rocks? Well, I don't know if it was related, but he's definitely dead. Yeah, he's got to be dead. Did he shit them out? What happened? I don't, I don't know, dude. That was when we, we, dude, we had this like backyard wrestling league that was like on concrete. <laughs> that, it was real dumb, real dumb stuff. That's like the sickest <laughs> shit, though. Everything you just said is the coolest <laughs> thing I've ever heard. Sentence. Yeah. Yeah, dude, I'm definitely like a, you know, I'm definitely like a, I come from good stock. Yeah. <laughs> so what was that? In, what was this wrestling league inspired by? Uh, WWF. Okay. Did it have a name? Did you guys have a name for the league? No, 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 no. We would just like power bomb each other on concrete. And stuff, oh, and it was not. And then one of those guys was this guy that ate rocks, literally. Well, we had the, the, this dude had a carport, right? And it was it was okay. It was perfectly square on three, and then on three sides it was surrounded by fence. Uh-huh. And um, when he wasn't home, we would, you know, wrestle and use his carport as a wrestling ring. Okay. And then he found out, and he was not happy. <laughs> what did he do? <laughs> Oh, he screamed at us to never come back, but then we did. Okay, so he was not screaming <laughs> yeah. inside of his heart, but no, outside of okay, the heart. outside of heart. Yeah, but that's cool. I mean, it would be cool if he like decided that he could turn this into like a paid event and then like <laughs> made a lot of money off of you guys, like wrestling in his carport. I but, oh, I mean, that's that sounds like something that that one of the U.S. presidential candidates would do. <laughs> <laughs> it does definitely does. <laughs> 
So when this kid ate rocks, were they like little rocks or like an actual like you know, like you're holding. Well, like a I mean, big... you know, within reason. Okay. Can, but I mean, he's, I saw him swallow some sizable rock. <laughs> That's so but fucked, they're... dude. I remember. Yeah, a dude. Kid like, I... yeah. there was a kid I played but, soccer you know, with. They his would mom... eat worms. Oh, I've seen people oh, eat worms, dude. So gross. Like right out of the ground, just like. I'm like oh, I've seen that. Oh. Phil and Lil, dude, Rugrats. That's a cartoon. <laughs> yeah, close enough. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, fuck, man. Fuck, beast, man. That's you. Yeah, I guess so, dude. I gotta live up to your name or to your nickname well, for me. But the song when's the didn't last even... time you got laid. Uh, it's been a while. It's been, been a while? yeah, like less than a year. We need to change that. I know. Well, do you have a? How, do you have a lot of female <laughs> listeners? Uh, I don't know. Do uh, we, we get a couple? We have a few. Yeah. yeah. One of you should have, well, I shouldn't say that. No, you shouldn't say that. <laughs> and I don't agree with what you're about to say anyway, so. I didn't say it. I yeah. don't mean it. All right, so nothing Fair happened enough. then. We're yep. on easy oh, street man. here. So we got, okay, yeah, you have a new fucking record coming out. The, <laughs> tell me what it's called. It is called Violent Portraits of Doomed Escape. Okay, so when I think of Violent Portraits of Doomed Escape, I think of, have you ever played Mario 64? <laughs> No, I've never played video games. Oh, you've never played a video game ever in your entire life? I mean, I might have played like one or two, but like I never, never did. I think I played Crash Bandicoot once. That game's That's sick. a good one. Yeah. Well, in Mario 64, to get to the level, you had to jump through these paintings. So that's kind of when I first heard that album title, I thought of like the doomed escape of jumping into a painting in Mario 64. <laughs> but I'm sure that's, that's not sick. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's sick. I like the name of that album a lot. I like the art yeah, I... a lot, too. Yeah, the artwork turned out cool, man. That's my buddy from Reading, Sean. He's a, he's a really talented painter. Oh, wow, really? Okay. So yeah. this was like Yeah, we wanted a painted cover, so it... fuck yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, I very much very much enjoy painted covers. So what was Damn, that's cool. So you guys just has he done any album covers before you guys like for metal bands and I shit? Think, I think that was his first album cover. Hell yeah. It looks awesome. I know he's never he never he never did any for a metal band at all. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool that you guys went with somebody back home and like somebody that you knew too. Cause didn't you guys have like Travis That's, Smith do the last album cover? Yeah. Travis Smith did our last album. Yeah, he that, did a great job. He that did. was an honor. Dude. That, that was incredible. Yeah. But, that is wild. Fuck man. Yeah. Shit. That's so cool. Well shit. Okay. Yeah, dude. What were you going to say? I don't remember. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think the record is awesome, dude. I am. Uh, really hoping to get to see you guys whenever the fuck it happens again. Whenever you guys get to play well, again, I want to I play with you guys. And, well, yeah, and have and have a bunch of big hugs for everybody. Absolutely, we would love to play with you guys any given day, any given time. You just let us know. I just want to say to all the female listeners, I've I've re I've rethought about what I was going to say. <laughs> I think that one of you lovely ladies should let Jason take you out on a on a on a nice dinner date. Because he's a gentleman and a scholar and he's nice. And that's how, what I think should happen. Yeah. Well, thanks, man. That's fair. <laughs> I appreciate that. And yeah. hey. For, I would let you take me out. I would take you out. You have, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty <laughs> sure I have as well, man. We bought you ice cream. We bought you all. We got you all. We fed you. Every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah every day every damn day yeah fuck i missed that man that was so much fun yeah it was a good one i mean there were some really shot places that we played in there yeah didn't we play ohio uh no we played Nor uh, fargo north dakota oh uh, yeah Did we didn't, play no, didn't we play dayton we played dayton didn't we no not on that tour we didn't play dayton ohio i don't no, we no, don't. we played Indianapolis. Yeah, Indianapolis. we played that show was like nobody was there. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. And that big ass venue too. It was yep. huge. Yeah, there was yep. like 10 people like 20 people there. Yeah, it was it was literally that was probably like a 500 cap room and there were maybe 20. Ooh. Yeah, that's pretty rough. That's rough. Yeah. Yeah. But that Smiling Moose yeah. show was cool. There's people that showed up there. Yeah, that was that, Yeah, that was all right. I think that was another one where uh, we probably got a little festive before the show. Yeah, definitely. It's hard touring with Malcolm, dude. He'll get you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah.
yeah, dude. I remember when we were in a uh, fuck. It was the first show that we played in Canada. I think it was in Halifax. And like before their, he was either right after in Fury set or before their set. Malcolm was holding like, like three beers in each hand because nice. his hands are so yeah. fucking huge. <laughs> and I was just yep. like, Oh, he's gonna And I was like, Oh, who are those for? He's like me. And I was like, Oh shit. Okay. Yeah. We've had Malcolm yeah, on the show before. Have, oh, I'd, I'd love to talk with Malcolm. Would you? Yeah. I think he would love to talk to you. <laughs> Why don't you have us both on the show? Well, maybe I will. Why don't you don't maybe tell me what to do? <laughs> I won't. I mean, I, maybe you should. Maybe I sh- maybe maybe I should tell you to tell me not what to. Yep. Okay. I don't. I yeah. lost track. <laughs> yeah. Shit, man. Well, what? Okay, so you've been listening to some. You said you got the four, the first four Van Halen albums in your car <laughs> right now. What else you got? Correct. Are you in your I got car? Right now? Yeah, I'm in. I've been in my car this entire interview. <laughs> Whoa, shit, dude. Why? Just because yeah, you dude. do you like the car atmosphere? Well, my girlfriend's in the house cooking dinner and shit, and I was getting done work, so I figured I would just sit in the, sit in the garage and talk to you, gentlemen. Hell yeah! Well, that's sweet, uh, dude. So yeah, yeah, you've been you've been dating this lady for a while now, huh? Yeah, about what is March, May, June? About a year and five months, something like that. Oh, nice. That's really cool. How's it going? Tell me everything. <laughs> she is awesome. Hell yeah! And she is very uh, patient. Because she's dating a not very smart guy, mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, she's dating she's dating a uh, habitually self destructive guy. Yeah, <laughs> and um, so she's she's been very patient with allowing him to figure out how to be a more well adjusted individual. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And she has two wonderful dogs. What are and they? the dogs' names are Iko and Scarlet. That's what you were going to ask, yeah? Yeah, it was <laughs> Iko and Scarlet. Okay. Where do those names come from? Uh, well, much to my uh, much to my chagrin, they're Grateful Dead uh, references. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah, I hate the Grateful Dead, dude. Yeah, me but too. My no. like, <laughs> but yeah, Jerry Garcia's guitar tone is like the the sound of my nightmare. <laughs> is it really? <laughs> yeah, it's like a chicken. It's like just going like bark, 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 bark. <laughs> Hell yeah. I, dude, I have another hot take. I pissed, dude, I pissed my dad off the other day because I was like, because I told him that I think Carlos Santana sucks at guitar. <laughs> does your dad like Santana? Yeah, everybody's dad likes Santana. My dad does not. Oh, my dad doesn't no, know who I think my dad has Santana. a Santana CD, really? actually. Yeah, I think he has one. That's funny. Oh, my dad's, my dad's like an, like, my dad's like, like, has liked Santana since like 1969. Why? And I was like, <laughs> I don't know. I was just like, Dad, I think Santana sucks. Uh-huh. And he was like, he was like, yeah, well, <laughs> you're wrong, son. I was like, oh, you're wrong, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> have you, so have you gone like your whole life pretending like you were okay with Santana and now you finally. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm not doing it anymore. Damn. That's a big Good step, for you, man. man. Good for you. Yeah. Shit. Yeah, that's like, doing- that's very, that's growth. You know, yeah. at the end of the day, that's, that's, that's just, I'm- it's, it's growth. That's what I'm trying to do is, is just be more, be more integrated as a person. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, I've stopped using uh, drugs and I've also. Wow. Really? Admitted to, admitted to, yeah. And I've admitted to myself that I don't like Santana. That's great. Okay. So you, but you don't, were you doing drugs? Were you like smoking weed? Oh, th- there was a period of time about two, uh, three, two, three years ago where I was doing a lot of cocaine. Oh shit. Okay. Yeah. Cocaine. And, uh, yeah, and it and uh, it is a hell of a drug. Yeah, but but uh, you know, again, that's been that's been a uh, one of the health. I mean, my relationship is healthy, uh, you know, all around, which is strange to get used to, but it's awesome. And one of the things was, hey, if you want to have a relationship, you, you can't do that stuff anymore. And I was like, well, okay. <laughs> that's what that's what uh, your girlfriend said. Yeah, yeah, that's smart nice. of her to do. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, and it's, you know, it's, it's benefited me uh, multifold. Yeah. I'm sure it has not yeah, doing cocaine on a regular basis <laughs> is probably a great thing. Uh, you'd be surprised at how much it helps you sort things out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Probably, <laughs> probably a lot. Cause it's right yeah. there, you know, like, yeah. 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it was, yeah, dude, it was it was it was like in the time period where the band wasn't really doing anything, and I was just like, I felt really bad about life, and I was not, you know, I was I was a single man and living in Pennsylvania, and I was just like, God, I want to die. Yeah. So I, you know, I gave it, I gave it a shot. Mm-hmm. But but yeah, I mean, things are way better in that regard now. And and you, dude, you know, I sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Hell that's, yeah! That's, it, you, you'd be surprised at how much you need to sleep. I know, right? Eight hours a day can actually do you some good. Mm-hmm. It's definitely, definitely a nice thing, you know. But yeah, yeah so that's good, man. That's fucking awesome. I remember when we were uh, on the tour that we did. You were telling me you were like, "All right, I told my girlfriend I'm not going to get drunk at all," and you did a pretty good job of not getting too drunk on that tour. I did okay. Yeah, I, I think did you okay. did. You weren't like incoherent at any time. Uh, and, like, I think there was- I probably was. At- I was at that at that Sault Ste. Marie show. Okay, yeah, maybe oh, a little bit. I don't know. Everybody I was. was. That sounded like it was a free for all for everybody, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, dude, the, there were like there were like twelve people there, and we were like, "Fuck this place! Let's you know, <laughs> let's play and and then get really drunk." Yeah. I mean, and you know what? You know, the thing that it turned out, like the people that came, like they were really happy to be there. Yeah, definitely. It's just like, it's just like when you show up at a venue and you're like, "Oh my god, I don't even know how I'm gonna do this." Yeah. Because you know the, the PA setup, it was like, oh no, yeah, it was the pretty stage rough. Wasn't big enough. Yeah, there wasn't a stage. It was like we played on like a little platform in a corner. <laughs> yeah, it was very. But you uh, know, I I try to remind myself though too, like even shows like that, we're still lucky to be doing it. So it's like there's oh, there's yeah. there's different there's like different ways. To, let's back to you know different ways to look at everything. Absolutely. And I would rather be doing that than nothing. I'd rather be doing that than this. I mean, like being at home all the time, like shit, I would play a shot show and get hammered in Sault Ste. Marie instead of being at working from home, you know, like fuck that. 1000%. Yeah, man. I even got drunk at that show, which doesn't happen (laughs) a lot. Yeah, it was definitely, that was a fun time. Well, again, Malcolm's just like, you want a beer? You want a beer? And I like, if you give me a beer, I'm taking it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care if it's fucking eight in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Well, I like how Malcolm sits in like his grandpa chair and like the van, like the shotgun yeah. seat. And it's just like, yeah. go visit old grandpa Malcolm and he'll fucking either. He's got like a bottle of Jack or just like a ton of beers. Yeah. Oh, like Modelo. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Much Modelo. yeah. There was a yeah. lot of Modelo. Yeah. Yeah, yep. dude, I remember when we bought beer at that show, we had to go to this weird ass liquor store that like you ordered from like a tablet, like the liquor wasn't on display because mm-hmm. like they and like they ha- I guess it's the liquor law in that part of Canada where like they had to get an employee to go back into like a warehouse and bring the booze out front for you. Oh, uh, yeah, I've heard stuff like yeah, that. They have very... to physically handle yep. the liquor. Before. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, weed yeah. here. I think- Right. It's it's provincial. It's it's it goes by province, and I know Ontario has yeah. pretty weird, which is where we were. They have pretty weird beer and alcohol laws. Yeah, very. Uh, they strange. have like very like you can only get alcohol in one spot. Like they have one store that you can get it. Yeah, I forget what it's called. I think it's called a Bevmo, maybe. Some, I don't remember. But well, yeah, we drove hmm. to one of those at that show to get all the beer. Yeah. I, I didn't go, but I remember we owed you money for beer, and I hope we paid you back. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't handle that. So. Who would yeah, who would handle that? Guy. Um, Max. Probably Alex. I, Max. <laughs> yeah, probably Alex. <laughs> How's that son of a bitch? He's good, man. Alex is doing good. Cool. As far <laughs> as far as I know, he's doing good. Um, he's coming. He'll be on our show in a couple of weeks. Sick. So here, yeah, he'll be Sick. here. But yeah, he's doing good, man. You know, chugging along, fucking. <laughs> cooling like he usually does doing some weird shit <laughs> yeah like liking porn a bunch yeah he still likes a lot of porn sick <laughs> <laughs> yep it's definitely very sick he told me something <laughs> weird as fuck the other day that he did where i was like well i can't right. remember it's just like it all bleeds together after a certain point where it's like <laughs> oh yeah i hear this all the time so I, it's like it becomes like normal it's no longer yeah. Yeah. shock value to mm-hmm. what he says <laughs> yeah but yeah, he's doing good. Yeah. He's been he's been doing pretty good. Um, he's been making music under like he does like this synth project on his own um, that he's been putting music out with, which is pretty cool. Cool. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Send my regards to all those boys, man. 
Yeah, I will, man. Yeah, I definitely will. I've still been, I mean, Adrian still hang quite a bit and like, I've seen almost everybody a bit since like all this shit went down. We haven't been doing too much because of everything out here, but we're, we're starting to kind of get the bearings back on and shit. You know, there was something I wanted to bring up with you and I, and I think maybe you, maybe you can help me address it because I have an issue with it. Okay. Yeah. I I saw that Jace quit smoking. Yeah, he did. I don't like that. I don't know why he would do that. (laughs) You want him to start (laughs) smoking again? Yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, okay, let me address something to you. I don't know if you saw or if you know, but apparently uh, Biggs smokes cigarettes now. I didn't see that. No. Yeah. Biggs came on our show. If the episode Just is out, up. dude, Biggs was smoking like t- he smoked like seven cigarettes on our yeah. episode with him, dude. And like he told, really? he told me he was drug free and he lit up a cigarette. And I'm like, are you smoking a cigarette? And he's like, yeah, I picked this habit up instead. And I, I think like he might be the first human being I've ever met over the age of 30 that decides to pick that chose to pick up smoking. Oh dude, that's so sick. It's very (laughs) sick, dude. I was, it was just like, yeah, I was just like, wow. Like, yeah. But I mean, he looks good. I mean, he looks great. And like, he's, he said he's been like, you know, he, I don't think he's been drinking. I don't think he's been smoking and stuff like that. Or, you know, Oh yeah, there you go. Nice. Yeah. Dude, Big's got you beat. That's only one. Oh, that's number two because you were smoking when we started. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna go outside here. <laughs> no, oh, smoke damn. in your car, dude. No, I can't. It's in the garage, dude. You want, you want me to get, you want to get in trouble with my girlfriend? Dude? No, I don't want that to happen. Does she know you smoke or do you hide it? Oh no, she smokes too. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but yeah, Jace did. Jace has. Jace hasn't smoked cigarettes for a while now. What was that like? He posted something on Facebook. I forget yeah. how long it's been. Six months or maybe longer than that. I think it was longer. Yeah. It's great. I, I, lo- I love when Jace doesn't smoke cigarettes because it saves us time on everything <laughs> we ever do. Nah, man. <laughs> no. No. Nah, no. Nah. Have him on the show with me. I'll talk him back. And were, you that, yeah, were you the guy that, were you the guy that, didn't you go up to him on tour and you'd just be like, smokes? Oh, yeah, dude, totally. I would take the smoke all the time. Yeah, he would do because we were the openers, dude. So, yeah. yeah, Jace had to give you cigarettes, man. It's the way it is, dude. It's the code of the road. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. I, hey, I don't, I don't mind, you know? Oh, yeah, give, give the headliner the uh, cigarettes, the headliner that everyone leaves for. Well, you probably had to give... <laughs> <laughs> you probably had to give Glenn Benton cigarettes, right? Uh, he didn't smoke. Actually, he was violently anti-smoking, but he used to smoke, and that's why. Really? Mm-hmm. He was violently yeah. anti-cigarette or anti-every mm-hmm. type of smoke? I think just cigarettes. Did he smoke weed? I can't remember. I don't think so. Yeah. Damn. I feel like I just want to interview you about Glenn Benton, <laughs> dude. Ask away, dude. <sighs> that guy's so... You ever listen to Vital Remains? Hell yeah. Do yeah. you <laughs> Yeah, oh, dude. Woo. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> yeah i think i think there's definitely like you could hear some stevie ray vaughn on you know in that record a little bit you know a lot of stevie ray a lot of it's got that twang dude <laughs> yeah, that christian has got that twang yeah not, not that twang dude <laughs> you know what I mean, does. Dude. yeah of course i know what you mean so here you are in fucking mesa arizona smoking on a cig chilling <laughs> i like it. your hat i couldn't see what was on your hat though Oh, it's my P- Barrow's Pizza hat. What's it called? Oh, it's Barrow's Pizza? Yeah. Is it a cool place? It's good pizza. Is it good pizza? But I try not to. Yeah. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. But you're from Chicago, so you you maybe like different types of pizza. Do you like the deep dish pizza? Do you I like, like all the kinds Chicago of, style? I like all kinds of pizza, man. I, I try don't... not to eat too much because my metabolism doesn't do too well anymore. Yeah. I Dude, I'm in the, I'm the same fucking way. I, I got... Uh, there's a hot chicken place that's supposed to be like similar to a Nashville spot in Chicago called Bud Longs. There's a couple of them. Ooh. And uh, you saw me do this at practice a couple weeks ago. I did it again because I had like a night to myself didn't where I was just lesson, like, huh? I didn't. So like I get I got this extra hot chicken sandwich um, and I was like, I'm going to be home all night. Like I could just shit my brains out. Like I'll be fine. I'll be at home. And like so I got it got really baked. I ate this chicken sandwich really fast <laughs> and literally like maybe 10 minutes later like it was just like my body was like convulsing because it hurt so bad like 
<laughs> and it just felt like my insides yeah. were on fire, dude. So I like went to bed like sweating, <laughs> like in my nothing but my underwear, this fat, miserable, <laughs> sweaty dude, just like in my bed, just like trying not to like cry because right. it hurt so much. And I was just like, why dude. did I do this? Like I was doing? so pissed, dude. And then the next day I was like, it was so it was so fucking bad, dude. I like I like worked on my fucking toilet. <laughs> literally for yeah, like a really? good, yeah, yeah for a oh, good chunk man. of it dude yeah it was fucking bad yeah not so I, and I can't do shit like that anymore that's the whole thing i used to be like this iron stomach dude i used to eat be able to eat anything and now it's just like i can't eat that type of shit anymore I, if it's like after one in the morning in taco bell i have to face the, the fact that i'm like if i do this right now there will be consequences <laughs> here consequences like, yeah yeah and there will there absolutely will be yeah it's insane it's it sucks man that's like my least favorite part about getting old is that i can't just eat like a fucking idiot all the time i mean it's probably yeah, good I, you I, know to not eat like an idiot the all best. the time yeah definitely for the best I, but it's like I, a bummer. I get real bad heartburn I get real bad heartburn. Really? See, yeah. I don't yet, but I feel like That's within good. the next five years, that'll be something it. that happens to me. I hope you never do, man. It's very unpleasant. Yeah, I know. I've, I know. I have a lot of friends that have get heartburn or like really bad acid reflux, and it's just like it I sounds it. bad. Oh, I've had it a couple my times. Says, my girlfriend says I'll like cry in my sleep, and then I'll wake up with it. It's bad. <laughs> like not cry, but like I'll go. Oh, I fall asleep. <laughs> and fucking yeah, it's it's bad. Dude. Yeah, that would be funny if you did cry though in your sleep. <laughs> Uh, well, I scream in my sleep. Actually. Do you? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it happened to me a couple nights ago. I, 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 I my dog actually woke me up. Uh, Were you having like a night like, terror? I don't know, dude. I was just apparently screaming, and my dog was like, "What the fuck are you doing, dude?" <laughs> Damn. And um, so she started licking my face, and then I woke up, and my girlfriend was like, "Yeah, you were. I don't know what you were doing, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah." Dude, it's all that screaming inside of your heart. There's <laughs> yeah. so much in your heart that you need to yeah, let it to out in your out. sleep. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think I think I really am screaming inside of my heart. I think that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, you know. But that, hey, I I think that it's a great sentiment. I think it might be impossible sometimes, <laughs> but maybe somebody who's listening to this right now can benefit from learning how to scream inside of their heart. Well, I think the benefits, I mean, I, I think ultimately, you know, Screaming inside of your heart is 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 way better than screaming outside of your far, your heart your fart your fart because, yeah <laughs> screaming inside of my fart yeah fart farting inside I think you know the the main thing is that nobody gives a fuck what's wrong with you yeah so like so it's better to just keep it inside <laughs> yeah definitely that's always keep a better in. option yeah yeah bottle it up keep yeah. it in don't ever communicate it forget nope. it. Yeah. Heart attack at 40. Uh-huh. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> From all the yeah. internal screaming. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, like you, can you imagine, like, like just get, uh, like you're 40 and you just go like, oh! and then you're dead? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, I could imagine it. I mean, I'm sure that's happened to some people. Dude, it's happened to a lot of, like, mo like most people. Yeah. Like, that happens to. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, one, one day. One day you're just like, oh, and then you're dead. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> so sick. That is... It's like you're born. You don't ask for that. And then you go through like between, I don't know, you know, between one and, and 90 years of, of misery. And then you just go, oh, yeah. and then you're nothing. <laughs> yeah. And then you're dead. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So cool. Mm -hmm. It is very. <laughs> yeah, dude, it is fucking cool, man. It's a, yeah. the mystery of life. Like that's probably what happened to Stevie Ray, dude. Yeah, he was probably he was probably just like, oh no, no. He, well, he was in the helicopter. Yeah, and then <laughs> and then he went and then the helicopter crashed and he went like, oh, and then that, that's it. <laughs> dude, what's with all these guitar players dying of like flight accidents? Randy Rose, dude, I don't know, man. Dude. I saw Skinner win, dude. Well, you better not be going on a plane anytime soon. I'll tell you that. Dude, much. I hate flying. I hate flying. I'm Do afraid. you really hate? I love flying, actually, but I can no. understand why a lot of people hate it. No, I'm terrified of it, and and I, you know, I've had to do it like because I, you know, living in Arizona, having my family in Pennsylvania, and having yeah. my band all over the place. Like, um, it, I've had to fly a lot. And dude, we like when we went to Europe, we fl I flew. Oh my god, it sucked. I did Phoenix to Detroit to Montreal, to London, 
to Berlin. Oh Jeez. my God. Just you or the whole and band? It, well, the whole band, but like th- those guys aren't like giant idiots. Like they can handle flying like an adult and I, <laughs> I can't. So we're over the Atlantic hitting turbulence and I'm like, well, th- I'm like, this is it. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> You're screaming inside of your heart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I so, can understand that. Well, Hey, you made it. I, though. Like, yeah, I made it, man. And, uh, you know, Dude, the jet lag, that shit is real, man. Mm-hmm. When, you get, when you fly to fucking Berlin from Arizona. Yeah, I'm sure. Because they say, I guess they say when you travel east, because of the way you're moving time-wise, it, it hits you worse. Uh-huh. I don't, I don't know. Uh, but, um, man, when I got to Berlin, I didn't know what the fuck was what. And then Ethan, my buddy Ethan, dude, he, <laughs> he when he, his, his passport was in like three months of, was within like three months of expiring. Uh-huh. So when we got to London... I guess German law required, like you can't have a passport that's within six months of expiring to go to Germany. That's so so dumb. Yeah. What kind of fucking rule is that? I guess it has to do with immigration. They don't want anybody just like staying there. Oh, I see. So (laughs) make sure to get your ass out of here. (laughs) I see. So we're getting on the plane from London to Berlin and they're like, Ethan can't get on it and you guys need to leave. So we had to leave Ethan in London, he had to go to the embassy and figure all that out. Oh my and god! I felt so I felt so bad for him. So he stayed in London for like two days, and then we played our first show in Berlin without him. Oh my! God. Ethan's the only reason, guitar wise, to come see our band. It sure as fuck ain't me. <laughs> and, and, Did you uh, rip all of his solos though? No. No. <laughs> it's okay. No, I didn't. And uh, so we, yeah, like that was a really bad show. Yeah. But then Ethan joined us and everything was okay. Did no, it, it's did, okay. Did Ethan meet you guys in Berlin? Yes. Like after he the flew show? Into Berlin, he flew into Berlin after the show. He actually made it to Berlin like he made it to Berlin as Rivers was playing in Berlin. So right after us. Oh, shit. Okay. Wow. So he just met up with you. And then we. Yeah. Yeah. And then he got on the bus and then we played Leipzig the next day. That's sick. Yeah, that tour looked awesome, yeah. man. I like. I don't know how to pronounce their name. Mole, M O L, or whatever the. Fuck. Oh, dude, they are sick dudes. Yeah, and a sick band, dude. A funny story. Their bass player Holger, he is. Uh, he's one. He's one of my favorite people in the whole world. You would love him. Oh yeah. Um, he's hilarious, dude. So, one the it was actually in I forget it was some in somewhere in Germany. Someone shit on the bus. Oh. Which no. <laughs> you're not supposed to do. So Holger and I decided that we were gonna we were gonna get to the bottom of it. We were gonna figure out who sh- who was who the bus shitter was. Uh-huh. So Holger, who's who's this six foot six Danish dude with a really dry sense of humor, he was going up to people. We played good cop bad cop with him. So Holger was like, Holger was like, oh, I, I very much fancy shitting on the bus, don't you? You know, trying to get somebody <laughs> try, trying to get somebody to admit that they shit on the bus. Uh-huh. Like, well, I often wake up and shit on the bus how about you you know and then and then i'd be like i'd scream at him like you did it you son of a bitch i know you did (laughs) okay you were the bad cop then yeah and um so finally we couldn't figure out who it was and our bus driver was actually like if this doesn't get sorted out we're not going to the next show whoa he said um, that yeah oh my god so finally at the end of the night i went up to ethan and i was like yeah man it's like somebody shit on the bus and ethan was like yeah i did Oh man! Because he missed, he missed, he'd never been on a bus before, and he missed the the speech at the beginning because he was trapped in London, so he shit on the bus. Oh shit! Okay. <laughs> oh, is this? So I was there the day after they were there. Yeah. What? Where was this? Uh, it should say that was in Germany. Yeah. So Bill was on a tour with who are you? You were with Soil. Soil. You know that band, uh, Soil? They're like a new metal yeah. band. Yeah, he. My little hand, oh. Exactly. Yeah, Bill. Ta- he's their he's their guitar tech. Yeah. And um, that was the Stag X Soil Wednesday Thirteen and Dope. Tour. Yeah, and they were there at that whatever venue. What yeah, what, what venue was it? Uh, was it Germany? Uh, Tricks. Where Where in Germany? Um, we're trying to figure it out. It wasn't V Spotten, was it? I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. But he saw your flyer at the, <laughs> for that tour, like at that show. 
I mean, sucks, just... dude. We could have drank some beers and got morbidly drunk. Yeah. We definitely could have. I've never been to Europe, man. Shit. Pretty cool. Well, I would <laughs> I would love to go to Europe with you guys. Dude, I would love to go to Europe with you guys. Yeah, it'd be so sick, like rivers and to get rivers involved with that too. Dude, fuck yeah. That would be insanely sick. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, all we need, uh, all we need is is profound societal change, and then that'll happen. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's definitely what we need, and I don't see it yeah. happening anytime soon. It's no, we need, we need the entire planet to change. Yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> just about. <laughs> so, so, you know, I, I, I give it, give it four or five months. Yeah, yeah, definitely four or five months. Maybe, maybe we'll have something there. Maybe. Yeah, dude, like. Oh God! I yeah, whatever. Um, I already talked enough about that. I hear you, man. Well, we've kept you for a pretty long time here now. Well, I'm gonna go eat dinner. Are you? What's it, what's on the menu? I don't know. I'm gonna find out. I'll <laughs> let you know. Please do <laughs> let me know, and we'll we'll talk about it on the next episode. Yo, have me back. I'll yeah. talk about the government. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely man. Yeah, I would like to have. I want to have like maybe you and James back on when once the record drops and shit. Um, well, we would love to. You let us know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So. Normally at the end of the episode, I mean, do you want to plug the new record? We usually have our guests plug whatever the fuck they want to plug. Yeah. Okay. Right now. <laughs> yeah. Go for it, <laughs> go man. Go ahead. Okay. I think it comes out on August 7th. Hell yeah. Violent cool. Portraits of Doomed Escape on Century Media Records. And I would really appreciate it if you would buy it. And if you do buy it, think about how you might change so that we can profoundly change our society so that we can play music again for you. Yeah. And then they could hear those songs. Yeah. And then we can take Warforged out too. Yeah. Okay. Def yeah, absolutely. <laughs> see, that's the thing. If you guys don't change, you're never going to see Jason Nitz again. That's true. I'll be dead. If you don't change in a fucking week, I'm dead. He's going to go. Oh! And then that's it. <laughs> yeah. From the all that. the screaming inside of my fucking heart, which <laughs> yeah, believe yeah. me, there has been a lot. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, fuck well, you yeah, gentlemen man. have a wonderful night. You yeah, too. You dude. Too. Thanks for coming on the show. It was great seeing you again. Anytime. Sorry. I talked about the government. <laughs> it's okay, right. man. Hey, you gotta, you gotta fucking do it, dude. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> May peace be with you. May peace be with your lady. May peace be with your family and your dogs and your bandmates. Oh, peace with all you guys. Same, brother. Cliche as it is, that's what we need is some goddamn peace. You're damn right. You're go yeah, you're right. So oh, have man. a good night. You too, man. Take it I easy, dude. It. Love you, buddy. See you, man. Love you too. Bye. Bye. All righty. And that was, that was awesome. uh, the fine Andy Thomas of Black Crown Initiate with uh, Violent Portraits of Doom to Escape coming out on August 7th. Uh, it is, is a fucking awesome record. If you're watching this and you like this band, you will like this new record probably more than the other shit even because it's just so much cooler. Um, I mean, not that they're sh I mean, I love everything that band has done. I've, I'm genuinely a fan of that band and uh, it's cool. It's a great record. Um Pick it up. I pre-ordered it. Pre-order it if you haven't yet. Check it out. Great people. Great dudes. Great tunes. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Nice. What do you got to plug? Dude. What do I have to plug? Uh, nothing, man. Um, I went to a dispensary and I hated it, kind of. Where was it at? Uh, I went to a Sunnyside dispensary. It's It's on Clark Street, like in Wrigleyville. Oh, okay. And uh, this isn't like a plug. It's just a story, I guess. But um, you can do that too. I went. Uh, so I was like, I ran out of edible gummies, like weed gummies. And I was like, oh, I could buy some of those in Chicago. And it's probably not outrageous. It's about $15 more than I would have paid in Colorado for like the same thing, which is a county, man. Yeah. Man. $15 worth of taxes, pretty much. So yeah, it's insane. I, I remember Nate was mentioning how much, like, it was like, yeah, forty five fifty dollars just in taxes, like for what he bought. And oh yeah, like for everything much. in total. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you <laughs> buy three substantial items, you're looking at upwards of a hundred and fifty to more. Such a bummer. It's, it's like, a huge bummer. Buy your weed illegally. Yeah. Buy your fucking do it. It's so fucking. It's is not it, worth uh, it. It's not worth it. Is it just as easy to get from a like your a old drug dealer? dealer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I go through friends, so right. yeah, but it seems. 
I've I don't, never bought drugs, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, you know what? I'm like, never, actually, i got to ask my friends that. I'm just I haven't had a lot of doing. drug buying experiences either as I'm a late bloomer to the weed <laughs> right. smoking. But uh, wonder, from what I can tell, my friends that do buy from dealers, it's still fine. It's substantially cheaper because you're not oh, paying yeah. taxes. Absolutely. Hmm. Yeah. Or so some I, dudes like overhead for a shop in the middle of fucking Chicago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I went to a uh, sunny side and the reason I went there was because I mean, it's, I don't know. I, the thing is, I don't know because I, the dispensary is open in January. I didn't, this is my first time like going and buying it. One was oh, at really? sunny side. Yeah. It's the I first time I, had, no. I went to med men and it was a bad experience and I walked where's, out. Where's that one? That one's in, it's in Evanston. There's a couple locations oh, in Chicago. Okay. Same with sunny side, sunny side. Funny enough. There's one on Grand Avenue in Elwood Park right by where I used to live. Oh, no shit. Yeah, yeah it's fucking crazy. But there's one in Wrigleyville. Obviously, it's the one closest to me. It's like mm-hmm. a 10 minute, 15 minute drive. Okay, um, that's not that. Bad. So I went there. <clears throat> I So essentially, I had to make like, I had to place my order online, but you can't pay online, but you place your order online. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. It was tricky because every, it seems like every dispense. pay cash? There. Okay. How's yes, that work? Yes, but. I'm, I paid cash. You don't have to pay cash. I've seen some, me and Nate were talking about it. You could pay with a card, but it doesn't work as like a debit or a credit transaction. It works as like an ATM withdrawal, essentially. Like it'll okay. show up on your bank statement as like an ATM withdrawal. So a fee will come out of it and like whatever right. money they take from it. Well, the whole thing is, I'm sure people listening already know, but it's a whole federal thing. Exactly. Yeah. So essentially that's what they do. But I, I, uh, like in Denver, it's I think it's still cash only. So yeah, well, I mean, until it is legal on a national level, yeah. they they're gonna have to keep doing that. Yeah. So I was just like, I'll get cash, fuck it, you know. And I also because I, I was I saw that they had an ATM there and there was like an advertisement for the website on it. I was like, oh, I'll just get cash at Chase and what not pay. What was the pay. fee uh, at the ATM there? <sighs> I don't know. I didn't even ask because um, I had the cash before. Oh, I was just okay. like, I stopped at Chase. Wonder if it's on like a, like like strip clubs will have ATMs and like the fee is like insanely high yeah like it's so well ridiculous. that's how they get you you know oh yeah for and sure it's i like, imagine it's got to be somewhat similar well you know me anal and pre-prepared for fucking everything no, so it's good. It's smart yeah so i was just like <laughs> i'll just get my cash to chase and then bring it over there so uh it's weird because all these dispensaries work really differently and i can't tell if it's because of covid19 now or if this is just mm. how it was already because it was like you essentially have to reserve a time. I tried to go to dispensary 33. Yeah, that's a COVID thing. <clears throat> well, dispensary 33 did reservations before COVID-19. Oh, really? Yeah. So what I did was I tried to go there first. Um, I tried to essentially, if you want to go there, you have to reserve a ticket through Eventbrite. And then you have to pick out, you reserve a ticket for the time to go there. Then you pick out your order and then you go there during your window time mm. that your ticket, but the tickets are only available like first thing in the morning. So you need to be up early at like eight or nine to like, reserve dude, that spot or else crowd? they go out. <laughs> I'm, stoners, it, but they still, on. they still sell out I'm of those sure, tickets every yeah, day. Yeah, but, so like I was checking it out like in the afternoon and I was like, Oh, mm, I really? don't give a shit. <laughs> so then I was looking at some other dispensaries. I came across Sunnyside. What they do is a little different. They um they allow you to place orders at any time during the day, but they only open ordering from like the top, the top of the hour. So oh, like okay. it was 2 p.m. around there. I put the items in my cart. I was like, all right, let's see what happens around two. Refresh the page. Was able to place the order, and then I got a text notification right away that was like, your order is ready for pickup. And I'm like, well, I guess they don't really have to prepare it. So. Uh, I was just like, all right, I guess I'll go over there and pick it up. So I go over there and pick it up. I, I park. I park in on Clark Street in front of Sunnyside. There's a little line, like five people. And I'm like, all right, I'll just get in this line. So I'm waiting in line. And then uh, finally they have like a secure. They have like all these fucking employees working there, dude. It's like so many people. And it's ridiculous. Like some dudes were where I mean, most of them were wearing masks, but some people were like not really wearing them properly and shit. And it was hanging out. <laughs> yeah. Like there was dudes like that. It was just so like, OK, come on, guys. Really? Like this is so fucking it's just I hate it, dude. I hate mm-hmm. going to dispensaries here. It fucking sucks. And there's nothing any of you could fucking do to tell me otherwise. But uh, <laughs> besides that, it was it was so fucking it was like. So I was in this line, right? Security guy comes out and he was like, all right, can I see your ID? And I'm like, yeah. 
And then he's like, all right, do you have a receipt? And I'm like, no, I placed an order online. And he was like, oh, you're going to have to go to that building. Points to a building across the street. Um, and it's like, you'll have to go there, check in with them, get a receipt. They'll send you over here to get in line, to get inside, Jesus to get your Christ. stuff. And then you'll be good to go. So I was just like, fuck, I was not prepared to really take an hour out of my day. Yeah. Uh, but I guess I'm, I'm here, so I'm going to figure it out. So I go to this other building visibly pissed um you're probably not the only one <laughs> well i check i check in right and they're like all right you could just have a scene anywhere and like we'll call you when it's your time to go and i'm like fuck and i go in this building and it's like i see they have these big posters with like the wi-fi password and the network i'm like fuck this means i'm probably gonna be here for a while and like there was already there had to be like 10 people in front of me dude there was like there's already 10 people sitting there and this is just to pay for what you're going to get this is just to get to get into the building to pay to yeah to get into the actual dispensary it's like a waiting building almost it's really weird yeah so i don't know mm. why but so eventually like i was sitting i didn't even end up sitting there for that long honestly less than 10 minutes they finally oh, called my name then i went um i got my it still it was like overall it was probably like a 25 minute ordeal which is i get it but it's it's dude the price is not worth it that you're paying yeah, for these products. Headache. That process is not worth getting high. It's just like, it's like a bureaucracy. It's like a bureaucracy is mm. what it is. It's just like some weird ass bureaucratic process of me it getting my fucking weed. everything down. Yeah. And it's just like, this is more miserable. Yeah. And it's like, come on, man. Like I, I don't get it, but I get that there's like armed guards there with guns. It's like, what are you going to shoot a guy that takes a pack of gummies that he clearly has no access to? Like, Come on, this fucking sucks. It just sucks. Like buying weed in Denver is so much fucking sicker than here. Like that feels cool because mm -hmm. they just check your ID. There's no guns. Like you get in, they show you all kinds of crazy shit you could buy. The taxes aren't fucking insane. You're in and out in like like going to a regular store. Right. You know what I mean? It's just like so smooth. Have you ever been to a dispensary in Denver or Colorado? Mm -mm. The Man. last time I was in uh Denver, it was like the it was literally the year before yeah. it got legalized. Well, if you're ever there again, I would <laughs> recommend just doing it just to try it to see what it's like. I mean, even I mean, if you buy um, some bullshit. Jack, the you know, Bruton who oh, Okay. You know, subs for you, he went to the one in Oak Park when it first opened and he had like a really good experience. Like it Okay. It turned out really well. Even though it was like hectic because it was like literally the first day. And so there was a line like around the block. But yeah. He managed to get in pretty quick and in and out super fast. Got what yeah. he wanted. And yeah. uh, it's Oak Park, so I imagine it's still a I wonder which one there. it is over there. It was the one in like the downtown area off of Lake Street. Do you know what it's called? No, it's like by where like Is it Bar Mad Men? Because isn't be? there a Mad Men in? It might be. I haven't been that way in so long. Maybe I'll take that way back. Where is it on? You know where like... Chipotle and like Bar Louis yeah. is, and there's like that weird little alley street thing that goes to the parking garage off of Lake Street. Yeah, it's like on there somewhere. Oh, yeah, it's not like Marion, like but like that weird. Yeah, not yeah. quite. It's okay. just that, I, I I believe it has a street name. I just don't know what it is. Yeah, okay. But it's a weird little like paved. Gotcha. Mini street. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, shit. Anyway, I have nothing else to plug other than I bought legal weed and <laughs> buy illegal weed. It's better. Yeah, it's probably easier. And yeah. I imagine like that's probably for most people are doing that already had connections yeah. to weed. Um, yeah, I'm just curious if that's like fucked with pricing at all for people or fucked it up for dealers like trying to sell. I don't, I don't know. know. We'd have to have a drug dealer on the show to see. I only know one, but I don't think he'd want to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know any that would. I don't know any. And I don't know. Ooh, excuse me. I don't know any that would. But hey, guys, if you're a drug dealer, uh, <clears throat> You want message to come, us and you want to come on the show and be public about it you probably it, it would probably be fine but i mean it's legal it, well, it's not mean, illegal for them to, to sell, sell it, it but yeah. yeah you can come on the show and we'll change your voice yeah if you feel we won't put you on the screen yeah well you could wear like a <laughs> ski mask or something yeah. or a paper bag no we'll just do it or like they just skype in and we'll just do the voice oh, yeah. and I can yeah. change the voice. We could do that. So hey, if you're interested in letting us if know, you know and, somebody that wants yeah. to talk about it, hit us yeah. up, message us. Yeah. Do you cool. have anything to plug? Nah, same shit. Roman Ring. Something is waiting. Check them out. Yeah, fuck yeah. 
Sweet. Well, thanks for listening, guys. We'll be back here next week with uh, Jace and Dave. Yeah. Should be a fun one. Hell yeah. Should Hell be a lot yeah. of fun. And then we're going to be doing our new uh, thing after that. The yeah. Metalcore. Metalcore episode with Alex. Yeah. So, so it should be the shit. More music. Hell stuff. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. All right, guys. Take it easy. Bye. Bye. Hey, it's us again. I mean, me and Bill. Yep. Uh, thanks for listening to this episode with Andy Thomas of Black Crown Initiate. It was a lot of fun getting to talk to him. Talked about a lot of things, including screaming inside of your heart. And uh, while you are screaming inside of your heart, please feel free to smash that motherfucking subscribe button. Uh, leave a comment. Follow us on our social medias. I keep saying I'm going to get on our Instagram again, and I am. But, and it'll be a surprise attack. So when you follow it, you'll be like, wow, I'm glad I really did this. Um, yeah, check it out. Check us out on the interwebs. Tell your friends to listen. Uh, don't tell your friends to listen. Do whatever you want. Thanks for listening. We appreciate it. And uh, we'll talk to you guys later. Perfect. Bye.